of a modification to an existing uh, license for Black Diamond for Barbecue. Black Diamond. Yeah. Uh, if you would, for item number two specifically, uh, review and approve warning for vote. Okay. Discuss tax sale. Uh, That's all you're allowed. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's been a day. Discuss signature authority for ANR reporting. And a possible executive session. Okay. That's enough. Yeah. All right, next, a copy trust meeting. Hello. Hi. We're, we've got uh, follow-up and approval of the Copley Hospital request for funds for the MRI unit lighting. Are you here to speak about that? I uh, am. Yeah. That's great, welcome. Thank you, it's great to be here again. Um, we've made great progress. We've seen, um, the process and today we've raised really good. It seemed like it went up pretty fast. It did, and it, mapped, the brick matches. it matches. It matches. Yeah, it does. Very, um, yeah, very subtle mm -hmm. addition to the, to the building. So we're very excited about that. I do have the, um, the complete purchase order, if anyone would like to see it. Um, for the lighting? For, well, for the entire, for the entire uh, project. Um, but you'll find it on page 5. Um, on 58, has the ambient LED lighting on it. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah, what's the, just curious, uh, once the, that MRI is done, uh, what's going to happen with the mobile one that's been there for a long time? That's a really great question. I think we are, um, I think we are looking to donate the MRI to the problem. But it's still fully functional and everything, right? It still is still using it now. fully functional, exactly. Yeah, and it's in a different mobile trailer. So yeah. that we could, you know, drive it elsewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks. Sure. What does the machine itself cost? The MRI itself is 1.34 million of the, of the project. The entire project is 2.8. Any questions? I hear a motion from Gloria. We approve. I'll second. 
It is I'll second it. Sorry, not that page five. Oh, not that page five. Oh, the billion. There we go. So it's thirty thousand exactly. It is. Okay. All right. So I have a motion. Did I have a second? Yes. Second by Brian. <coughs> Any further discussion on this? When is the project going to be totally complete? Um, totally complete meaning installed. Everything, yeah, yes. installed, working, all done. So I would say um, the end of December. End of December. Yes. Yeah. We'll probably have a, um, uh, you know, ribbon cutting kind of ceremony in early January. Right. Great, great. Any any other questions or discussion? Can All in favor? Bob, can I ask what the, the motion specifically stated? Was it a motion to approve, Gloria? Because I didn't hear all. Did, did you your motion was to approve the appropriation? Is that what it was? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yes. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Thank you. I, I, they are not in the packet. You don't I have didn't see them today. Okay. Yeah. Do we have anything else we need to talk about? Okay. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for coming tonight. Thank you. Thanks for the info. Great project. Yes. Thank you. All right. Is there a second for the adjournment and a vote? Um, yes. Second. Second by Judy. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are now out of the Copley Thank Trust. Thank Thanks, Tina. We are now in the regular select board meeting. Okay, approve the minutes. Uh, number one, the minutes of special meeting October 7th, 2021. Do I have a motion regarding those? So moved. I have a motion by Gary. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Brian. Is there any further discussion? <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes are moved. That's um, number two, minutes of meeting on October 4th, 2021. Motion approval. I have a motion to approve second. those and a second by Gary. Is there any further discussion on these? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes are passed. Next, community concerns. Do we have community concerns tonight? Somebody up there? Well, someone has a hand up, but is it really? I can't see. It's in a blank space. Oh, I think that's Those just. Are the, all muted. Those are all muted. Yeah. I think that's just the curtain. There's nobody up there that's going to. I'll go. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Jamie. Okay. Um, so, this past week, um, I attended the, the planning council meeting um, and had a chat with them uh, with regard uh, to the Duke Hamilton property um, and as it related uh, to, to the town plan, which has been passed on now to you folks. Um, I tried to do my best uh, to share with them uh, my understanding of the history of the purchase of that property, um, as well as uh, permitting and other uh, documents that are out there that, that relate to that. Um, I must say that uh, I think that they were all surprised uh, at much of the information that I presented to them um, and that they weren't uh, quite aware. Um, and specifically what I was bringing up to them uh, was uh, how the Hamill property is uh, laid out in, in the 2020-2030 draft uh, town plan. Um, and how that differs um, from 
let's say the 2015 plan, there is a drastic difference between the way the animals represented in the 2015 plan um, and the 2020 town plan. Uh, the 2020 town plan, um, in, in my opinion, uh, marginalizes open space, recreation, and public use. Um, you know, all you have to do is, is read it. Uh, incidental uses of the view handle property, such as hiking, biking, it's all, shall only be allowed on the property insofar as they do not interfere with the town's current or future gravel needs. Now, I'm not going to go into all of it because the documents are all out there, um, but the property was purchased um, with the understanding of gravel, but also for the majority of the property to be set aside as open space, forest land, uh, and recreation. And I don't feel as though the town plan, as it says to gravel resources, um, reflects the honest history uh, of what the purchase was. And I feel as though that there is an attempt to rewrite history as it pertains to the purchase of that, uh, that property. Um, so I am proposing um, and trying to get ahead of the game because I know that the, the, um, the public hearings aren't until the 17th, but I'm trying to get ahead of the game and give you folks some, something to maybe consider. Um, but I am considering, uh, or I'm offering to you um, one option uh, of which you can think about of a rewording of what might be more realistic uh, of that particular property uh, that reads, uh, in 1991, town meeting resulted in unanimous approval by the voters to purchase the Dewey Hamill property in Katie's Falls for the dual purpose of gravel extraction and land preservation. In addition to the gravel resources, the resolution to purchase the property placed an importance on preserving 300 acres of land as open space and forest land for public use. Taking this into consideration, the town will continue to fulfill this mandate. Current and future long-term plans for the property will consider the importance of these coexisting benefits. I think that is something that more uh, appropriately re reflects uh, the history and, and the purpose of that uh, purchase. Um, so I'm hoping that you, excuse me, that you folks will take this into consideration um, as you work towards um, refining the town plan. Uh, and I'll give you a copy. And I'll give you a copy, Bob. Yep. And uh, thank you. Um, Timmy, what page is that on in the new town plan? Uh, new town plan, I think, I, uh, page, I don't know, 48, I can't remember. Okay. Um, certainly you can, you know, yeah, it's, I have it somewhere. Okay. Um, and I can point it out to you probably before the end of the meeting. Um, that's helpful. Okay. So there you have it. Does anyone have any comments on this? No? Um, I would like Eric to speak about, if you don't mind, Eric, the information you have about the, the cost that it's costing us so far, the taxpayers, to deal with this. I don't know if this is an appropriate time to bring that up. Well, I mean, the, the permitting process, starting with the, the borings that were done at the gravel pit, uh, to include engineering fees, legal fees, uh, the cost of purchasing materials outside of our gravel pit and the trucking therein. Um, I asked uh, our finance director, Tina, to do a cost analysis from start until I think the 10, October 4th was the cutoff date that she went to. Uh, and came up with a dollar figure of uh, $462,000 in change that the taxpayers have put forth so far during the process in order to renew the, the permit. So, so far, this is what's cost the more sound taxpayers. I, I understand that. I'm not, and and besides I'm not, besides, besides the money that, I, that was already paid for the property. I, I understand. And all, what I'm trying to point out is the voters in 1991 purchased it for a particular reason. And all I'm saying is this board needs to respect the decision of the voters at that time, as well as subsequent permits by Act 250, DRB, whomever, and follow the process. I'm not arguing that it's costing this town money, but right. there are things that are laid out there, and it's a historical fact, and you cannot deny it when you read the different documents. So I'm not arguing that it's 
one over the other. I'm saying that this information is out there and you folks need to understand it and consider it when you're making your decisions. I understand that part of it was to purchase, was purchased for ground. I get that. But 288 acres, 380 acres, it's a pretty big moving target when you start reading the documents in terms of how big the parcel is and how much is supposed to be set aside. But if you read the documents, the permits, the applications, it specifically calls out that the vast majority will be protected and preserved as open space forest land for public use. I'd like to see those documents. As far as I know, and my history with there, I've, I've hunted there. Mm -hmm. You know, I mm -hmm. I used to go on it when Tom Hurtak owned it before yeah. Harold Benaj owned it. You know, I've been there since I was sure. a kid, and I remember when when the town bought it, and I still hunted down there. And and as I understood it at the time from Tom Hurtak, who was actually the chair of the select board at that time, I think, and he said you can you can use it. It it's, it was purchased for gravel, but it, it has a, it has a use for recreation also. So, because I was questioning whether I should be using it anymore, sure. had permission, you can, you and the can, townspeople can, sure. but the primary use was 100% gravel, and not, I have not everything else. Any document anywhere that right. prioritizes one over the other. You know, it's a dual purpose. They're both out there. Right. You know, Charles Burnham has mentioned it in several of his documents, be they responses to the initial Act 250. Uh, 5L 1136, the initial permit. Yeah. Uh, he, he mentions it in the narrative of the initial DRB permit. Yeah. Which I'm also right. curious well, I know. why there's no DRB permit for phase two. Right. So if someone wants to explain to me why there's no DRB for phase two, I'd really like to know the answer. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. And but apparently I... there isn't going to be one for phase three either because the previous town administrator told the town planner. Don't put it on the dock, you don't need to do it. Right, well, I don't so, know. I don't maybe know here you can tell me why there's no DRB permit for phase two? No, I, I can't tell you why, but I don't ever remember seeing an application. Right, I mean, when you read yeah. the narrative from phase one, it specifically says, hey, this is for right. phase one, but when we move into phase two, we're going to be coming back with an application for phase two. But, but that apparently never happened. I'm just, I'm, my comment is that. You know, it sounds like you're you're trying to sell it as a dual use, 50-50, yeah. whereas I I was always told that it was primary for gravel with the use for recreation. I don't too, see. that we never disallowed it, and every one of our permits has mentioned recreation, mm -hmm. so we have to keep it in there. And I'm but but like acres right. of the property to be preserved. Well, and that's the that's what they use. The word is preserved. 288 right. acres. Right. That's that's more than 50-50. But if it doesn't art articulate that that 300 acres, the gravel pit extraction may move around on that 300 acres through time, and the but part that's been reclaimed could become the recreation part. You can't consider, you, you cannot that's, consider, I don't see how you can consider, and we can take this up another time right. when there's a public hearing, but you cannot consider a an area that has been mined for gravel and then reshaped you can in no way consider that as preserved. But you can. You so can't. That's, it's not so you spelled can't, out and, that way. And unfortunately, that's what Mumley is planning to do. Hmm. In their calculation of their 288 acres, which as far as I'm concerned, is based on the phase one initial 12 acres, and it was up to 20 acres, hmm. and they only used so many, but those two figures subtracted from the 316 gives you 288, hmm. which means there was never a thought back then of moving into the phase three right. area that you are now. And you just can't calculate phase one and phase two mm -hmm. in your 288 acres if you're using the word preserve. You just right. can't do it. Well, it sounds to me like it's never been articulated well enough. I think it's been, you know, well, that's in my, in my mind. Are, the documents are pretty, it's, you know, you can read Charlie it, Burnham's right. you know, write ups to the Active 50 Commission and to the DRB at the time about. Preserving yeah. for open space. Yeah. And he says 300 acres, right. not 288. But there's a lot of history that goes with that too. Like when, when Hank started building all these bike trails down there, he never came to the town to ask for permission. He ne as far as we know, there, there was never any any I, ask for I'm doing not even it. Talking about that. You know, that's not I know, I know, but I'm just all saying, all I'm saying is this is thing's morphed into something. It's, so now all of a sudden, there are so many you know, parts to this model. I, I know, understand it. Believe I know. me, I understand. And I'm not against that. You heard me. I, I shot my first deer 
on that property. And what I'm so saying far. is the property was purchased for a particular reason, mm -hmm. uh, and it was for two reasons. Right. The town plan for 2020, as proposed, unfairly, unjustly, right. weighs more heavily on one than the other, marginalizing the other. And I think that the town plan needs to represent why it was purchased in 1991. Right. And, but and see, that's how I understand it to be, how it's just marginally recreation, most no, of it's gravel. It's, that's know, how I understand it to be. I don't know if you, I think everybody on the board that's, felt that. Or I don't know about you, Jess. If you have read the documents, well, it doesn't sound as though you have. Yeah. Um, I don't think that you can. I just know the history of it. <laughs> You know the history of it, but if you have yeah. the documents, you don't know the legal history of it. Mm -hmm. And I will happily provide you with the documents. Yeah, I'd like to I see where it says 50-50 or whatever, you know. I'd like to see that. So, but I'm just, I'd like the like you folks to It would be news to us. Yeah. It would be, yeah. but we appreciate bringing information yeah. forward, and, for and sure. I have no idea why there's no DRV permit for phase three. I don't. I, I wouldn't be able to tell you that. I don't know Do if you think would look into that. there should be one for phase three here? I get, I'd have to review that and, and see. I don't. Uh, I don't remember what the first permit said. You know, the Act 250 mm -hmm. permit, and well, I don't. I don't remember permit. the conditions of yeah. the Act 250 permit or and or the DRV permit. Yeah. Well, I can tell you. you I'd have to review those. You can get the existing DRV permit for Phase One from the town planner because that's where I got it from. Yeah, no, I'm, yeah. I'm not doubting that. I just so, don't remember yep. off the top of my head. But we can well, try to I, do I some would, more I research. I would very much like it if someone would be able to review that and get back to me and let me know if there's going to be a DRB application for Phase 3 and why there wasn't one for Phase 3. I don't know the answer possible. to that, but we can try to look into it. I, I, I think these questions are probably more appropriate to be asked at the, the public hearing or from the Duhamel Pit in November. I don't think. Okay. Well, I, maybe or for the December, time. whenever, whenever the whenever the hearing is scheduled at this point. November, there, maybe for maybe yeah. for well, what I've suggested, yeah. but as far yeah. as a permit for the DRV from yeah. the DRV, mm -hmm. that has nothing to do with the town plan. So yeah. I would still be interested to know the answer to that. So mm -hmm. our, our our meeting on November fifteenth is the the town plan yeah. all public hearing, the first one. Um, I'm saying at this point in time, we have a, an Act 250 permit in process. We have legal counsel, we have an engineer representing us for that. Yep. I think muddying the, the, bringing this into the town plan discussion, it's more appropriate that this be brought up at the Act 250 hearing right. as a motion or as a part of an argument. Um, to insert language at this point without consulting with the attorney, I think is, is a mistake. Right. So well, we can well it's that. actually a change of language, that's the thing. And that's where I don't understand why, like looking through the town plan, like from 2015, it mm -hmm. says one thing, and then I don't know where the impetus for changing that comes. And I've also looked a little bit at the, um, the original 1991 permits and the documentation, and to me it does also state clearly that yes, the primary, no, or not, not even, you know, that, that there is a dual purpose for the pit and it does mention the open space and recreational use. So I, d I don't, I don't understand what the reasoning is or even what the like legality of like changing the town plan um, to, you know, change the in initial intent of a purchase. Like that doesn't ring true to me, it, it, it worries me, so. And, and as far as the Act 250 permit and application is concerned, at the moment, that's reliant on the, two, the 2015 plan, because the 2020 plan is not in effect. So, and by my understanding, the 2020-2030 plan could go as far out as towards town meeting day, which hopefully we can get the 250 thing done by then, which means the 250 thing is gonna be reliant on the 2015 plan. And I'm merely saying, going forward, you know, we need to reflect what really happened there uh, because that wording does concern me, mm -hmm. uh, especially if, you know, somehow someone attempts to in the future say, well, it says here that gravel trumps all. So, you know, I know we said that we were going to work with the recreational users, but it says gravel trumps all, so we don't have to. You yeah. know, so things like that concern me. Mm -hmm. and I want to make sure that everything is worded uh, appropriately and by the facts and historically. That's all I'm going to have. Yeah. 
And I was happy to supply you with yeah. copies of. Uh, That'd be great, because that's always how I understood it to be, you know, since the beginning. But thanks I mean, for bringing it. Yeah. Bringing it with us. Is there any other community concerns tonight? Anyone from out there? All right, we'll move on. New business. Uh, do you want to Thank do you, the. Jamie. What's that? Thank you, Jamie. Um, I'm going to do liquor control. Do that first. Do I hear a motion to go into liquor control? So moved. Motion by Brian. Second. Second by Judy. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are now into liquor control. Go ahead, Sarah. I so, see you. So Jason um, from Black Town Barbecue reached out um, to me. I think you have a copy of um, his email. So he already has a first class license, um, but they're going to take over the upstairs. And so he wants to amend um, the permit to be the full floors and um, the attached um, deck. So it's just an amendment of his um, yeah. front is that for dining, upstairs for dining as well? Right. All right, do we hear a motion regarding this? Make a motion we allow uh, Black Diner Barbecue LLC to uh, serve liquor on the second floor of 639 Morristown Corners. I'll second it. I have a motion by Judy and a second by Gary. Any further discussion? Yeah, he also has the attached. Oh. That deck. And the, the attached deck. That deck. Jason, do you know, is there any issues with them? No, no issues. No issues? Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Do we have any other liquor control? No. That's it? Do I hear a motion to come out? Yes. I have a motion. Second. And a second by Judy. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are now out of liquor control. Um, you want to do, okay, we'll do, uh, trying to get some of these other ones. The uh, ANR reporting, the signature thing. Yeah, that's, uh, so ANR, there's an annual report due uh, for uh, stormwater discharge out of New Hamill Pit. Mm -hmm. And in order to submit the report, Tyler has completed the report in order to submit it. Um, I have to have signature authority from the select board in order to do an electronic signature, which is a federal requirement of their permitting process. Um, so I, I'm just looking for a, a motion uh, to give me the, the authority to electronic sign and submit reports to the agency of natural resources. Okay. It's not my report. Do you I have to do those reports. Do you have a special motion or do you? I do. It's right here. And then a required signature by the board. Okay, we, the Martin Select Board, hereby authorize the town administrator, Eric Dodge, to electronically sign and submit reports to the Agency of Natural Resources. Is there a second? Second. Second, second by Judy. Any further discussion on this? Uh, <clears throat> so, this is, can you, um, this is an outside um, agency who's um, collecting data about discharge from the, like, er, like water, um, water quality stuff. Like, what is, what, what, what is the report exactly? So part of it is uh, Kevin has uh, requirements to do water testing at the discharge of a couple of the, the culverts uh -huh. in that area. Uh -huh. um, there is a, a report that Tyler has put together on behalf of the town uh, in reference to the questions they ask it's a three-page report i haven't seen the report yet um i i received this in an email two weeks ago today uh didn't know what it was and it you know, obviously had some importance it was tied to the handle permit and uh so in working through with tyler tyler uh, jumped on it and got the report completed but in order to submit the report through anr I have to have shown to a and r that i have signature authority to submit the report but yeah the, the report just talks to um, inspecting the areas for erosion any mitigation that was done to stop the erosion uh, 
I don't remember all the questions at this point, but it was all about just controlling stormwater discharge out of there. And Kevin's been doing the testing right along. So the testing results were part of that report. And that's all public, a matter of public record. Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. We'll do a discuss a tax sale. Is that you, Sarah? Uh, Um, didn't we decide we weren't going to um, go up to small set, amounts? Yeah, under 100. <clears throat> Is that true? Uh, yeah, okay. I simply gave you all of them. <coughs> all of them. Okay. I, um, my recommendation is not to send all of these. Some of them are so small. Yeah. Um, it's not worth Even the one the attorney's time yeah. To, yeah. to do them, and it's not worth the expense to us. Right. Even at bottom six, you know, the. Yeah, you know, so traditionally, um, <coughs> since we've switched and um, Jim Barlow has been doing our taxes and we're actually having to pay the legal fees, the board has made a motion to do $1,000 for um, more. Um, I might consider actually even recommend saying maybe even 2000 or more is worth it just um, to offset the, the legal fees that you're paying to um, take somebody up for tax sale. Okay, how does the board feel about that, um, Brian? That sounds good to me. Okay, Jess? Um, yeah, so, the, so Jim Barlow's legal fees are mm -hmm. like approximately how much per um, sale? Um, I think he averages it's he told me the average is around nine hundred dollars. Oh, it really yeah. depends. <laughs> yeah. It really depends on the sale. Um, if it goes to tax sale and the um, and it gets redeemed, the town can collect up to fifteen percent of it back. So if we pay nine hundred dollars and we can potentially recoup recoup fifteen percent of um, of it. If if the person um, we're asking for their taxes actually pays, is that right? If it gets redeemed, is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay. Okay. What do you think, Judy? I just wondering if very many of these are. Do we know uh, their circumstances? Um, not really. I know we're not. No, the majority of them unfortunately seem to be on the list every year, but I don't know personal circumstances of. Um, any of them. I will tell you that taking mobile homes um, to tax sale can be very, very complicated, especially unlanded ones. Um, we, yeah, we don't want to go there. I know that last time we sold one at tax sale, um, we got sued. We lost. And we paid thousands of dollars in attorney's fees to defending that we did everything properly. Um, but still, and we still get sued, even though we still have to pay the attorney fees to prove that we have done everything correct. Yeah. Gary, what do you think? I'm going to make a motion. I Good. make a motion authorizing the select board chair to sign an engagement letter with attorney Jim Barlow to conduct tax sales for all property owners that are in arrears of $2,000 or more. Okay, I have a motion by Gary. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Do you have a dog up for signature? 
No, Jim will. Oh, so Jim is going to, I'm going to give him the names tomorrow, and he's going to draw up a contract, so I'll let you know if you can stop by and sign it. Sure. Get it. Yeah, I can. So. <clears throat> All right. Next, we'll do um, discuss the LSUU district vote. So, um, Sharon, the town clerk in Elmore, reached out to me um, very late last week to tell me that the um, Elmore school, the, the Elmore select board had voted and they set a date of December 7th to hold. Um, they got a they got another petition back for Elmore to withdraw from the school union, and so they um, set that article on it, and they also set an article uh, to vote on allowing Stowe to withdraw from the union, and um, they also voted to mail all uh, registered voters ballots, and they voted to um, mail all vote. Um, voters um, postage paid return envelopes. So um, we do not have to do anything at the moment about the Elmore vote. We need to wait for them to get the results. And then if it's um, favorable to, for Elmore the, to withdraw from, then we, we will have to vote on that in the future. But right now what we have to vote on is still withdrawing and we have to do um, everything the same as Elmore. So we either have to, not we, I need to stop saying we, <laughs> you yeah. need to decide if um, you want to um, go ahead with the December 7th date and mail everybody their ballots and mail them all postage paid, and or if you don't agree to what Elmore has voted on, then somebody from the board is going to have to have a discussion with Elmore because we have to do it exactly the same. It has to be done the same day. It has to be done the same day, the same, same way. Same way. So we, we're being forced into this, basically, right now. Yeah. So we, how much is this going to cost us? Um, I don't know exact. I just... If we do and, post it pays, it's like $10,000 yes, up to. Uh, it's about $10,000 was my estimate to do, yeah. to mail everybody their ballots posted paid. If it's just um, mailing them out, it's 3000 right, or something yeah, like that? Yeah, just to, um, to mail everybody their ballots but not do the return postage paid is more like seven. Oh, seven. And then um, mailing um, ballots to just um, people that request, I threw in the figure of about 300, um, just as an average of the most I've seen at town meeting was like 200. Is that um, people or money? 300, um, that's us mailing out 300 ballots, okay. so as requested only, I think is around 2,500. Mm -hmm. But and those are very rough figures and of, um, Paying, you know, it's the difference is but you have to buy a lot more ballots when you're mailing it, them to everybody, um, and then the post, the postage. So if if Elmore is sending out every, to everybody in their community, then we have to also. We have to do so. We're, we're 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 kind of trapped here, then, basically. Well, you have some options. You can say yes, you want to do everything the same, and. So okay. You could say, no, we don't like that date, and start over. You could say, yes, we're okay with that date. Yes, we're okay with mailing everybody your, their ballots, but we don't want to do the postage. Like, um, Or, yes, we're okay with that date, but we don't want to mail everybody. And, and then you'll have to go back to them and have a discussion about the, yeah. the bits and pieces that you don't all agree on. Um, how much does it cost to send ballots without postage paid? Did you give us that number? So I seven. just guessed like... Oh, I thought it was seven, about, with, seven with no postage and then... I guessed about, maybe it's around closer to like 2,600. Okay. Okay. With, that's me guessing okay. that maybe 300 people will request ballots. Okay. Oh, got you, got you. That's also oh, oh. not to everybody, it's just people that request a ballot. Mm -hmm. So and you that, still have to do an Australian ballot here. Or not. Yes. 
we would still, so all of it would be a by Australian ballot. Um, and we would have, people would, even if we mail everybody their ballots and even if we mail them postage pay, we still have to run an election that day and everybody has the right to come in and vote that day. Um, our motto for the 2020 general election was BYOB, bring your own ballot. So you were mailed it at home. Um, our suggestion for COVID friendly was you complete it at home. It's the exact same ballot you would get here. And you simply, if you want to vote in person, bring your completed ballot um, from home and you can feed it through the tabulator instead of us handing a new one that you fill out. It would be exactly the same. So how much was it to just send those to every single person, um, but with, to have them bring them back? Did you tell us that? That's 10 So 000. not postage pay? Yeah. So that, I'm guessing, was... Um, a little less than 7,000. Yeah, okay. seven. All right. And that's to every single voter. Okay. Active voter. Okay. You see, I, I don't have a problem with doing that. I don't have a problem with um, having a vote on December 7th. I think it's a good thing. But I do, I do worry, and, and not just for everybody else, for myself too. I mean, the taxpayers are going to want to know what it's going to do to their property taxes, what it's going to do to the education of the students, and the quality of life for, for education, you know, those things are important. And, and if somebody can't explain those, the pros and cons to each way, affirmative or negative, then it, it's useless, you know? And we need, we need to have a way that information gets out there. Hey, I'm not in favor of going to a December 7th vote. To, to pay that money to do that, we can wait till March. I don't understand what the, the big rush is and what does that do? Um, I can't speak for Elmore, but my understanding that you should confirm with the Elmore Town Clerk is, is that they got a petition, so they have 60 days to act upon it, and they, because they have to have an election anyways, they are trying to save money by having one election instead of two separate elections. So they're going to do their town meeting vote on December 7th? No. No, the withdraw from Stowe and then their own withdraw. Yeah. Oh, okay. Richard, I know you've been participating in our meetings the past few meetings, but I know you've got a lot more information than we do about this, representing Stowe. Would you, would you help us with a little input of sure. uh, your peace of mind? Sure. Let me address, uh, I have a slightly different take than Sarah. Um, would you, would you introduce sorry, yourself, yeah, please? Uh, I'm Richard Blaine. I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but... I don't mean to be an interloper because I'm not a resident of Marshtown, I'm a resident of Stowe. Yeah. Uh, I helped to spearhead the petition and the vote in Stowe. Uh, that vote took place on a brief history uh, back in April. Um, it was certified by the Secretary of State's office uh, and sent to Marshtown and Elmore for a ratification. And in the statute that Sarah references, in which you are obligated to coordinate with Elmore with respect to the ratification vote of stuff. That statutory section, 724, provides that the ratification vote of the two towns must take place on the same day and the same polling hours. Sarah just said, and then she's right, I was at the Elmore Select Board meeting, they did vote to send it out by registered mail, mail with the return envelope. Um, the statute doesn't address that. It just says you have to coordinate and it has to be the same day and the same polling hours. Uh, the state in a general election with COVID is allowing for mail. You have discretion as a municipality whether you want to do that. Right. And I would submit to you that you would still comply with the statute if you just had in-person vote. I'm in favor of, of voting by mail, mm -hmm. but I did want to point that out. That is a distinction. Yeah. Um, so to go back, um, uh, we have in Stowe waited over six months. And I've seen the documentation six months ago. Um, there were opinions, not just on the statute that says it's a town vote. I know you don't typically deal with school board issues, 
Um, but it's a town book. The statute specifically says it, all the lawyers said it, and indeed, not just in April at the time, but since, many towns around Vermont have voted to withdraw and held ratification votes around Vermont. But six months went by, well, I think Elmore, to be fair, and Marshall, you folks wrestled with it. Is this really a town vote? <laughs> we, Sarah was on the phone with the state, <laughs> yeah, and, and we couldn't figure it out. Couldn't figure it out. Uh, but lo and behold, in September, I believe, through a town attorney, you received an opinion, it is a town vote. Yeah. Um, and Sarah is correct. There is now a petition that's been submitted in Elmore. Elmore once so has an obligation to hold that vote. And at their Elmore meeting, the select board decided December 7th, it's a Tuesday. They also have an obligation, and they have decided to hold a public information meeting mm -hmm. in advance of that vote on November 3rd. To get all the pros and cons out there, get the information, right? To that point, Bob, um, and so we, a group of residents, taxpayers, registered voters, we present all of the reasons why we believe our town should withdraw. And I think there's a common objective amongst the three towns, and that is to regain control of our schools and for the students who go to the schools, attend the schools in the community. That's the first thing. But in any event, um, uh, so they also have to deal with now the ratification of Stowe's vote. And that's what's before you. Right. And I have heard, since I have attended your meetings, um, that there's been some discussion about waiting till March. Right. And I've heard and seen in writing, heard people say, that there's no deadline to hold this ratification vote. And therefore, you folks have some discussion about putting it off to town meeting. Yeah, because we've got other issues, too, we're going to vote on, yeah. I, I'd like to address that, if I may, yeah. just briefly. Sure. Um, to be sure, Section 724 doesn't have a deadline. There's no deadline. But two things come up. One is an obligation for you to coordinate with Elmer to hold that ratification vote. Whether that, what you've done or haven't done over six months, that's why we're over the game. You have an obligation to do that. And I'll submit to you that in, when you talk about coordination, if one party, Elmer, says, we want to do it December 7th, and you say, Actually, we don't want to do it at a town meeting by March 2022. We'd like to hold it in March 2054. <laughs> no debt. Right. Where's the coordination? That's point number one. The word coordination becomes meaningless in that context, where the two can't agree. You want to do it March of 2022, they want to do it December 7th. Secondly, and I'll, I'll, I urge, your town attorney to take a look at section 721. Three sections before. That section covers union school districts that run K through 12. The district that we're talking about between our three communities, Stowe, Marshtown, and Elmore, is a unified union school district, K through 12. When dealing with union, There is a 90 day deadline for that ratification vote to take place. That's what's happened all over Vermont right. where this is going down. 90 days. Ask yourself, putting aside the grounds, the statutory grounds that I talked about, coordination, ask yourself, how is there equal protection, if you will? If a union, a talents in a union school district, have to have that application vote within 90 days 
And if it's a unified union school district, they, there is no doubt. I'm going to submit to you that if you really dig in, it's discrimination. Yeah. Okay? But, but be that as it may, there is another practical reason why I would urge you to heed the requests of the and hold them, whether it's by mail, in person, or a combination of the two on December 7th. Because if you put it off to March, maybe there's a petition submitted in, in March. Yeah, there's, I hear there's one. I, I hear there's one. Yeah. Not in March. We haven't seen it yet, but yeah. I haven't seen it. Yeah. Um, if you put it off to March and the ratification vote is passed, passed by Elmore, passed by the March in March of 2022, it leaves the, the towns in limbo, mm -hmm. not because the, 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 the fiscal year of the school district is July to July. Right. And there is absolutely no practical way under the sun to get that done in that to time. To get that done through the State Board of Education. Before so, July 1. Exactly. Well, so the, I would urge, and, and, you know, I, I, I say this with all uh, sincerity and respect. Um, the folks that, and, and I don't represent them, though I'm part of the group, we've looked at this, and, and frankly, we're exasperated by the delay. Mm -hmm. they're, they're so critical that we believe all three towns should go back and revert to the independent school districts under the SPU umbrella that we have that worked so well. Before 2015. Correct. Well, and before 2019. Yeah, okay. We were all forced to merge. All three towns were against the forced merger that the state required. Now we want to withdraw and revert back to what we had right. because it wasn't broke. See, what, need fix. What, I, what I'm worried about is, um, like I said before, getting um, the information out, yes. the informational meeting part in time for a December 7th vote, you know? Yes. That's so my only worry. It, and it's a fair concern, Bob. Um, I can assure you that with respect to the ratification vote itself, I mean, we had op-eds in, in the Sober Reporter. I'm sure there will be op-eds in, in, in the News and Citizen. Yeah. Uh, Tommy's on the line. Yeah. Um, we had letters to the editor. and. There was not just one view, the group that, that I was a part of, um, there were opposing views. Yeah. It just, so, so the word got out, and within the time frame, if you were to warn, let's say, your, your meeting on November 1st, yeah. um, you'd have to warn before November 8th. Right. In order right. to... The 30-day, exactly. December 7th, yeah. Correct. Well, I, think I'm about I can assure you that uh, the positions mm -hmm. for and against, uh, whether you're talking or not just, and, and the implications of how you talk about the tax yeah. we thought it was, if so, we know 1,068 registered voters in Stowe voted in favor of withdrawal. What is your, what is your population, what is your voter base? The, the 468 voters against it. No, no, no. The total. What's the total. What's the total voter base? Yeah, is is a little over there. Yeah, was well, a pretty pretty poor outer, I think, for that big. Twenty five percent. Yeah, it was. It was, it was it, pretty. It, and we did it by mail. Yeah. With a return envelope. The other thing I want to um, address is that the other other school districts in the state that are doing their divorce were not forced into their the unionization so they're they're not under the obligation that this this whole system was i just wanted to clear that so um for instance uh brattleboro Dumberston, guilford uh and cut were forced uh second westminster Rap and um, a third town that's escaping me. <laughs> they too were forced. They too were forced. Westminster sought to withdraw. And the other two towns held the vote. It went before the State Board of Education 
two months ago, and the State Board of Education approved Westminster's withdrawal. That's a fourth district. So, but it's not happening all over the state as you had presented. Some are voluntary, so you may have seen Ripton. Ripton's a voluntary. Yeah. There are voluntary, but to, to respond to your statement, there are forced merged districts in which towns have withdrawn. I just, don't, I just, don't, like, I just don't like the fact that we're being forced into having an, uh, an extra uh, election or a, a vote. vote that's going to cost our taxpayers more money when we don't need to go there until March. That's my objection. It's, again, because it's not benefiting us. Well, I, this is not benefiting you, us, our community. I would submit to you, apparently there are folks in your town, Marston, who are circulating a petition. Yeah, they come to me in the grocery store. To, is that right, Bob? Yeah, oh yeah, so, people say And do they, do they know what that, they're actually voting for and why and what the cost is? They don't know. Right, those Nobody questions Nobody knows like that. that. Right, that's what we've got to get the Nobody information. Nobody knows that. And I think, I think pushing this so quickly, it feels quick, is not good for our community. Yeah, it's certainly not for you because you've done a, been six months dealing with it. We've done it. We did it in the time frame that you're, that if you warned it, we, we got the word out and the, the views were expressed. And the we would have out. to do that. Um, get the word and out. And yeah, uh, it's actually incumbent upon us that we want to win this, to convince the folks in Morristown and the folks in Elmore to ratify our vote, to allow us to be drawn. I, I, don't, I don't think people in this community have. I, I don't know, I haven't taken They don't know what it means. They don't know what it means, but and I don't know that people are opposed to it or against it before. I don't know any of that. I just, they don't have the information, and yeah. I still go with, I don't like the fact that we're going to spend taxpayers' money to do something that could wait till March. I'm going to submit to you that you have that obligation. You have the obligation to coordinate and hold a vote and to respect the neighbors. That's what's going on here. It, you know, there are folks that I'm dealing with who say, geez, this is no way to treat a neighbor. Wow. And <laughs> then we waited six, six, right. six months, and they won't, because of this, this, this other statutory section where 90 days is long gone, yeah. uh, I'm not sure they're going to want to wait until March. Yeah, I, I'd like to see it happen. I'd like to get it behind us, but I want to get that information out so everybody knows what it means. But we can't do that, that uh, until right. more. Um, can I ask a question? Okay, so yes. first of all, um, what concerns me about this discussion is that we're hearing one voice from the Stowe School District and we're not hearing any voices from the Morristown or Elmore School District. So I don't feel like this is a proper forum to be having this debate. But um, my and my second question is, um, what happens for Stowe if um, if Morristown waits until March? I understand that's not what you're asking for, but I want to understand for Morristown what happens. We won't wait until March. Um, that's the that's not the. I, you're, but you're not answering my question. I'm sorry. What happens if Morristown decides to wait until oh. March? So so you have the vote. There's no. Date, same date where you're both going to hold an election in Australian ballot during the same following hours. So I believe Elmore's going to go fall. Well, okay. So vote on December I'm, I'm asking. I'm asking a hypothetical question. Yeah. And and from what I understand, Sarah says. Um, that if we decide we don't want to go along with the December 7th vote, we have to go talk to Elmore and work it out. We yeah. are we are working on coordinating, right. correct? Okay, so what I just want to understand is like what is the what is the um the big feeling of importance? Like why why is it so urgent for Stowe to have this vote now? Is it so that the 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 divorce can like Go through and everyone go their separate ways for the next school year. I'm trying to understand the, the reasoning. Next budget year. Uh -huh. the, next year okay. exactly. so the answer is yes. If you waited till March, as I said, and you would have to stay a part of the district it, for another year. Really, yeah. It's not just it's a year that's gone by. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with July of 2023. Mm -hmm. And think about that on a practical level. We have a very good LS UU school board. That is dealing with a unified school district with schools in the community. 
if that was to continue, there's a limbo. There's the morass of, because you have Stowe forming an independent school district while that's going on, and the budgetary issues. And you may have an independent school district in Elmore at the same time. And so from a practical standpoint, that's a uh, two-year bill, if you will. Um, and again, I think there are very good reasons why all three towns should have their own school district and go back to revert back. Right, I understand. What I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt you, but sure. that, this isn't the place where we're debating that. What right. we're talking about is when we're having the vote. And this debate, say, yeah. if I may, this debate should go on before your vote. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know, see, Eric and I attended sort of an unofficial meeting. We met with uh, Karen Draper and Caroline. And um, so I understand it a little more, more of the um, trying to work together. And we have to do it, so why not do it? Do it now, get it dealt with. And we try to do it so we don't have to have two uh, two votes or more than two votes, potentially. And um, Sarah wasn't going to go to that one because it was, could have been... A conflict for her I to think, do it. But. I think to to address a concern, certainly if 250 plus or minus registered voters in Marstown sign the petition and submit it to you, right? You're gonna have to hold a vote. Exactly. When and that's gonna be, they're getting signatures right now. So that's what I'm saying. I don't know about this petition if it's going to yeah. be submitted. To I know you it's by, real. by November first, your next meeting. Right. If it is. You have an obligation to work. Mm -hmm. Right. Assuming, we have no choice. We assuming do it. it's worth it, right? you've got no choice. And then you'd be in very much the same position as Elmer. Yeah. I'm just worried about the timeline, the aggressiveness of the timeline, and letting people understand what it means, you know? Because I, I don't. You know, I want to know think, if, is uh, the yes going to mean higher on, taxes? I sat in on, on uh, the Elmer's vote. I don't know the magic of December 7th. Right. I don't. Right. Um, I think let people. Other than other than the petition was submitted, there's a hundred day period. There's sixty days to do. You know, there's warning, no less than thirty, nor more than forty. And I think that's what's driving. Yeah. Um, but that is set from that. Right. Our town vote six months ago to withdraw, and really not. You have an obligation, statutory obligation. To coordinate your um, Brian, you had a. I was just going to say there's two things. I know you keep saying uh, what the people, you know, getting the word out to them. Well, to me, it ran off quick. To have them force us to go into a union, and now we're asking to get out. Now they're going to force us to do this, ratify. I've always liked to get along with our neighbors, our other towns. Elmore's been good to us. Stowe's been good to us. Johnson, Hyde Park. Oh, okay. I would like to see us do the best we can to get together with these people. Because I would vote only because we were pushed in in the first place, and now they're pushing us further. I think it's time to get out of this thing as quick as we can and do it. That's why I want to have the vote. That's why I'm not. The vote. Yeah, I know. And I know we're going to have to vote. It's a matter of when and, and to keep pushing Gary, around. Gary, you've been quiet over there. Yeah, I was just going to look up the uh, email and try to read that. Um, I appreciate bringing him up to us. But uh, I. I as well. I'm in favor of of doing the vote. I mean, it, it's a foregone conclusion that, that we have to. You have to hold the vote. Question one. Right. <laughs> because Delmar is uh, they made the move. Right. So the only option we have is if we think the timeline is too short, we have to negotiate with Elmore to stretch that out a little bit. And I don't know. Exactly how many days they have you could statutorily to Gary, you folks can tell one more I'm sorry we're not gonna hold the ratification vote on December seventh. That wouldn't be what I would suggest. Right. You could do that. 
they're going to hold their vote on the petition to withdraw. They're thinking efficiency mm -hmm. to hold right. two yeah. votes on the same day. I am too. Right? Yeah. yeah. Too. No, that's what we certainly want to do as well. And oh. so if you get a petition before your meeting on November 1, mm -hmm. you'd be holding two votes on the same day as well. Right. You could. Right. You could. I, I, if I can interject, I think Sarah has concerns about the timeline of ordering ballots, getting them in in time, stuffing 4,000 ballots in the envelopes to get mailed out. If we don't, if we actually did get a petition on the 1st of November, could we still meet the timeline for December 7th Warren meeting? Is that though, that depends on how we do it. We don't have to mail out 4,000 ballots, you know, we don't have to do that. We can do it. You can have the vote here and you can, you no, know. It cannot be a four vote. It has to be Australian vote. It has to be Australian vote. Well, we can have, you can have a, a town vote. And then anyone that requests a ballot, you can send them one. You don't yeah, have to mail out 4,000 ballots. I think that's where we. Go ahead, Debbie. Like this, Sarah yeah. seemed to suggest that yeah. since, simply because Delmar was doing it mail, right. and return <laughs> envelope, yeah. you must do the same. We don't have to. The same reason. That's what I'm saying. We, they have uh, a 10 percent of what we have, you know. So for them, it's it's an 800 dollar right. Yeah. Not 10,000. For you, it's a, if you go back down, it's 10,000. Right. Well, Danny, you got something else? No, I was just trying to say what Sarah had said originally was we could have it at the BFW. We could have it here. Be very stupid to mail out ballots with return mail. Because you just wasted postage on me because I'm going to put it in the slot. Yeah. You know, so. I will too. I think if you go back to what Sarah said, it's about 200. She's estimating 300. Yeah. On top of that, it's like what he said, is what I've been listening to. March is out of the question. Mm -hmm. Because if you've got a petition coming around, you either get on it now or you're going to have this same old January. Yeah. I will say that. On, at least from Stone's experience, uh, we had much greater voter participation as a result of folks receiving a ballot on now. Right. As opposed to voting in the During these times, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Considerably more. Any so other? Say our, our, our last year, it was like our town meeting when we mailed everybody our ballots. It was phenomenal to turn out compared yeah. to when people were I, I would have right. I, I'm biased. I just think this is such an important issue. Yeah. And you know the thing is like what Jeff says, you know, we don't have people from each town representing and come and talk to us, but they don't. They don't. They, they I have people from Elmore that talk to me when I'm in Elmore, people at the grocery store here. They won't come in here and, and be here for a meeting like Richard has the past six meetings or whatever. Uh, they don't. They can. They can come in any time. And they just don't, you know, instead they want to attack me in the grocery line, you know, or whatever, <laughs> and, um, or by phone or email or text, you know, so I get it. I think, uh, people have plenty of chance to come in here and tell us what they want. They, they call me or whatever, but I just think we should, we should have it. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Thanks for stepping forward, Richard. Yeah. At least, where do we want to go with this thank today? You. What do you, what will you, do we need to vote whether or not we're going to? Go forward and do the same as Elmore. Can we wait till we see if we get a petition, Sarah, or you would rather us make a decision tonight? To me, to me, the more time that I have to plan, the better. The better. I'm just, I'm just not happy being forced into. I, 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 I know. Tell you, whatever, I whatever you're gonna say, I'm, yeah. I'm a negative. That's okay. That's all right. Um, I also, That's why there's five of us. <laughs> I'm also not sure if technically I should vote since I work for the school district. Yeah. yeah, you can. Yeah, you, you can think I can. Yourself. If you okay. feel like it, you can yeah. recuse yourself. Okay. But, and, and are you guys in favor of, you know, having an Australian vote, town vote, like VFW are here, and then sending out requested ballots that way? I think the cheapest. The cheapest way. Cheapest way. I, I'm a little worried about, um, I do, I'm very concerned about the budget as I, you know, I've, mentioned other things in the past around budget concerns but um i do i'm not sure where people are at with their covid worries um with the new delta variant and older people and then going into the holidays i know i mean speaking 
personally, I'm I'm pretty fatigued about COVID, but I also know that I spend every single day in a school wearing a mask. Um, and I just I don't so I don't know if people are like gonna come out for. But election. those are the people that can request one. Right. Request okay. Back. I just I just want to make yeah. sure that we're really doing good publicity to yeah. make sure people know so that. If you yeah. don't feel safe, request a yeah. ballot. We'll send them to you. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's pretty simple. So it's incumbent upon this board then to do a presentation to the public? No, we don't. We... Just the public information. So well, someone has to do the public well, information. Right. I have a sense that people had some concerns today that there's not a requirement for an informational meeting statutorily. I'm not saying that I right. agree that you should be one, but I'm just, he verbally told me on the phone that but it would be nice if we had somebody that was. I, I mean, should we have someone at least from the school school board? Someone to explain something. Yeah, I don't. We can't. Don't have involvement. I agree, Judy. We need to have somebody. I think it's crazy. It. We're, we're the ones who are putting out the vote, so right. I think we have an obligation to at least supply right. some information. Right. Yeah. I agree. Um, school board would be more. I would. I would. I'm not sure that it's you have the obligation to give the information because the petition came from the town of Stowe, mm -hmm. and I, you're just ratifying, you're just voting <laughs> what they put forth. Mm -hmm. So I, I could be wrong, but I feel like it's that group that submitted the petition that would be. Yeah. Yeah, but that's, that's very biased. Yeah. It's not, there's not a, a pro and con group. This is a, a pro for divorce. So it just seems to be muddy. Very but as the taxpayer, not as a board member, you want to know everything you can about something right. before you vote on it. Absolutely. You know, I know I do. I don't yeah. want to just vote, oh, yeah, I think I'll vote no on this one. You know, see what know. happens. Because you, you and I have talked about this before. The, the budget is a huge concern. How's that money going to be split up? It was all thrown into one big pile. And you can't figure that out within a couple of weeks and answer those questions. I don't, I don't know. Right. I, don't, I could be wrong, but I don't think that you guys are the experts. I'm not. not my, it's not my place. If right. I knew the information, then I don't even know the information. We need to talk to the school. Who is it? Brad Pearl? Pretty well. Brad is, yeah. Brad. Is there any way you we can get Brad? No. Is there any way we can get Brad? The information that he sent to us is some, several topics he sent to us this fall. So I would want someone who is unbiased from this would just give us a pro and con on, on it, not someone who already has a. Uh, an axe to grind, so to speak, or has a, their own agenda that they're pushing. Well, that's why we have a public right. information meeting because yeah. you can have views from either side. Right. I we absolutely need to have a public information meeting, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have a comment, Richard? Yes, I did. Uh, Tom, we're invited. So to come in on their meeting on November 30th, comment. Give them the ratification of itself. I'm sure there can be opposing views presented at that meeting. We're taking the position. It's not the obligation of you to select for you. Right. I think that's our position. Yeah. That's the position. Right. Thank you. All right. So, do we want to make a decision on this? Go forward or rather put it off? Does someone want to make a motion about it? We do. The, the motion that has been put together. Uh, a motion to hold Central Town meeting on November 7th and town of Belmont to vote whether or not to allow the town of Soto to draw from the Lowell South Unified Union. And where where is this language coming from? Th this was this were uh, put together by Sarah in the event. So okay. Chose to have a, a motion uh, about that to get the discussion mm -hmm. and, and all that. You've, you've had a lot of discussion, but. When you put a motion on the floor, obviously it opens up for more discussion. So yeah, and has these four articles: the cannabis one, ATV one. That's a separate. They have to hold separate piece, but there, it, yeah. I mean, we have the the motions we have here would be in consideration of wanting to do a vote on the seventh. That's how they worded. Right. And if you then, how you want to conduct that vote? Reference to ballot the mailing wise. ballots. Yes. Yeah. And then a uh, third motion would be uh, to review a sample warning.
the setup with all of the polarized on there and whether or not you accepted that kind of sample warning going forward. Yeah. So I can hand this off to Gary to read this first motion, which is permanent for the vote on the seventh. Yeah. And you folks in deliberation vote. Yeah. Um, or you can table it. It's you you're you're running right. stops. I'm not trying to put words in your mouth or well, we don't have to decide on a warning tonight anyway. That's right. correct. That's correct. Yep. We can decide whether or not to have that vote on the seventh. I'm just wondering if we should talk with Elmore or are they firm on that December 7th date because of their own petition? Withdrawal. I, I believe that's what's driving their December 7th date. They're, I'm not sure what date the it petition is. is. Yeah. When they received the, they voted on it's that. based on a petition timeline. They received the petition. I don't know the date that they received it. I don't know how, if you can push it to January. I, I didn't ask any no. of those questions. They can't because of the petition timeline. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. They received the, what, they got 30 days? Yeah. Uh, 60. 60 days. That's 60 days, yeah. So they must have received. They just received it. I, I don't feel, I mean, I understand the, um, the, the legality or whatever of, um, I don't know if that's the right word, but I understand the reasoning behind the December 7th date, but I don't feel like voting on something and involving the school board unless we've actually talked to someone on the school board. Am I incorrect? Or is that well, it's not, out there? Or it's, it's, it's like, like um, it seems... we're just uh, the entity that holds a vote. Right. We don't have to. Do anything else to hold that vote, right? You know, the, but is it, the is state it be like, us to hold the vote. Is it going to be out of like left field for you know? No, a lot of people are waiting on this. The, the school, so we were originally getting before you were on the board, we were uh -huh. getting information from the secretary of state's office saying that it was a school board issue. So we were waiting for the school board to set it, and the school board. The previous superintendent also was getting the same information that yeah. we were receiving that it was, um, they were to set the vote. They were getting legal opinion. We all finally got legal opinion late this summer saying, no, it's not the school that the Secretary of State's office had been saying. It's really town. Yeah. So, That's part of the reason that it dragged on six months, yeah. too. So, because we were waiting for them to set it. Um, so the new superintendent had emailed both Karen and Elmore and I saying that they had gotten a legal opinion. It wasn't the school board. It was a town issue and that they they do not play a role in it and they would support us and however we proceeded and whenever we had a question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So can I ask you a question? What's up? What's going on here? Because <laughs> Stowe has voted, right? They've already voted. They voted and they want to get out of the marriage. Yes. They want a divorce. Mm -hmm. So all we're doing is ratifying it. We're, are we going to tell them they can't get out of the divorce? Well, some people yeah. might say. We could. You could. Because there's, well, a, lot, good. there's a lot that of issues on around focus. why they don't want to. But you would think that they would just keep fighting. I mean, I, I don't if, know. I had, if I was in a marriage and I didn't want it out, <laughs> then I'm going to get out one way or another. <laughs> but anyways, I just think that we're we're asking we're going to have to vote on this sometime. Yes, yeah. and we're we're basically well, ratifying what they did, and now Elmore wants to do the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're going to be asking us, so we're going to have to vote on that one too. Mm -hmm. I just think that it's we got some nice neighbors who want to keep, you know, let's work with them. That's what I say. Well, because they got dates, and I don't think that uh, dates we could have a. I believe we probably could have a hearing, or not a hearing, but a Information informational meeting. meeting at one of our meetings right here. We could. I, I don't want to debate the fact of whether or not we have nice neighbors, but the action of the divorce, if you knew more about it, if we all knew more about it, we may or may not decide that that was a nice thing. Right, but, but holding the vote has nothing to do with whether you're right, going to Right, I just, I, I, absolutely, I just, I'm going to put it out there. What we need to decide is, yeah. 
I'm going to make a motion to hold a special town meeting on December 7th, 2021, in conjunction with the town of Elmore to vote whether or not to allow the town stall to draw from the Lamoille South Unified Union. Okay. I'll second it. I have a motion by Gary and a second by Brian. Any further discussion? I just want to comment that I'd like to see public information before this happens, pros and cons, all of that. Now, how we obtain that through the school or whatever, it's needed because I, I don't know how I would vote right now and along with the other 90% of people in Morristown, but I agree with having the vote. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Yes. Motion is passed. I vote aye. No. I'd like to make a motion to mail all act. Oh. You can reword that as you see fit. Yeah. What we talked, what Sarah talked about, Denny. Right. I'd like to make a motion to mail ballots to requested ballot holders, act, uh, upon request voters. Yeah. Oh, so, right. I'll bring it up in a second. <laughs> That's just the default. So if you're not going to vote to mail them all the ballots, you don't need to. Right. Okay. We don't need a motion? Okay. You would only need a motion if you're going to mail them to everybody. Right. So we can, we can still... You can have that discussion yeah. of what you're going to want to do. And we can put out there that anybody who doesn't feel safe can request a ballot and we'll send it to them. I would just like to confirm, I case. think that's the one point that Richard and I um, see different. I was told that it had to be exactly the same as Elmore, so I just want to confirm mm -hmm. um, with the attorney that right. we don't have to mail it. I think that's prudent to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought I heard it was the same day, the same time, the same day. Not necessarily how the ballots are distributed, but that's definitely good to ask the attorney. And I hope our that information can come out to our taxpayers too. How much this is costing them? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm also interested to, I mean, is that something we'll debate later because uh, around whether to send the ballots out? Because if if there is some bearing on voter turnout, I think that's a really important thing to talk about. It's like above and beyond um, the, the immediate cost. What's the long-term cost of not getting the vote out to everybody? I mean, that's it. You know, I think the long-term cost could negate the short-term cost of um, getting the ballots out to every single voter. Right. Well, I think if they've got the opportunity to either come in person yes. or get a ballot mailed to right. them, that covers that covers us. Well, it covers us, but it also it doesn't necessarily like this is a strange time to have an election. Mm -hmm. Um. So it, but it's a strange you know, topic too. <laughs> well, there's like and there's four strange there's four big topics. You know, yeah. like this isn't just the school issue. This is cannabis in town. AT, oh, yeah. ATVs. Yeah. This no, is no. like a lot of really important kind of issues. If we put them all on there. So far, we voted on. We haven't okay, we'll talked about that warning. Okay. Jess is talking about the warning. It might include other articles. Right. It's a dog. Right. Okay. Where are we at now? I know. Are we ready for <laughs> <a minute? laughs> So we don't need a motion. We don't need a motion for that. You only need a motion if you want on the other Okay. Then we don't. Do can we, we no. can we add that in later? Like if no, if we pass this, we, we can decide to do that. And we November first, the other meeting. You can. So um, the next, not to move on to the next topics. The next topic is um, yeah. There's a draft warning in anticipation that you were going to um, pass having it on December seventh. The more time I have, the better. Mm -hmm. I just heard today. Uh, from you guys, I've not heard from anybody in the public about a petition um, that really changes things. I, I was really hoping the chairman and I were going to talk tomorrow if you approve the, the order ballot tomorrow. Right. And, and start to get, because it takes time to get them processed. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to pay to have expedited shipping if I don't have a lot of time. That can be a couple hundred dollars. Um, I just, I need time. I'm with you. So, I, I decide right now. If there's a petition coming, 
I do not want you to send a warning tonight because then we would spend all that money for ballots that we would have to destroy to get new ballots. Different ones. But we can still talk about this warning and how we want it worded or if we want something not on there or whatever. Or so that's the next topic. For March. No. For the December 7th. Yeah. So we decided so there's going to be a vote. We decided there's going to be oh a special vote. <laughs> but let's talk about the, the warning now. That's the next one is a warning. So here. did we decide whether, we didn't decide whether, we're going to have the vote on December 6th. Yeah, we so voted. Then, yes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and the we boys want. The boys want. I will Jim Barlow if we have to do the same thing or not. I did confirm with Will at election that, because um, it's a brand new law that allows you to do that, the COVID law has gone away because we're not in the state of emergency, but right. you do have the power to do that. Um, and you, even if you vote on mailing everybody their ballots, you do not have to do the postage paid. I wanted to make sure that that wasn't in the yep. law. That sounds good. Thanks, Sarah. So let's talk about this warning. So <laughs> Article 1, we've beat that down enough, I think. We don't need to talk about that one. Article two is shall the town authorize cannabis retailers in town pursuant to, to 7 VSA 863. Um, is everybody on board or opposed to having that be on the warning? Those next two, <coughs> Article two and Article three, shall the town authorize retail portions of cannabis integrated licensee operations in town? My, so, my only concern is, is this the ratification vote, I think, we're, we want to do an informational meeting. Yeah. I think the, the yeah. board wants to do that. Yeah, we don't have to decide that tonight, but yes. No, no, but then we're looking at these other two articles, and it seems like they should also be given some kind of informational yeah. meeting yeah. also. I agree. And that's a lot to do with between now and December 7th. It feels like a lot. Well, I think the people that want the cannabis retailers that should be doing the informing. We have to sit there. Yes. Oh, I'm happy to sit there. <laughs> I'm, I, I, Matt's on there. Yeah. Matt, yeah, you're not muted, huh? Uh, I just unmuted myself. I'm happy to uh, to put on the meeting or help put on. Like I said, I just need a little guidance from you guys, and I'd be happy to uh, help do the informational meeting. That sounds good. I don't, I don't have any problem with the information. I'm just concerned about this. Is a, it's a lot to big stuff. big stuff to do, and to me, it feels like a short period of time. Right. Well, this stuff has been around for quite a long time. The cannabis thing's been around a long time. The ATV thing ATV has been on for way too long. ATV, we don't need yeah. to talk about it anymore. Right. Well, except for I don't Actually, like the wording. Yeah, I don't like the wording. I don't like the wording at all. Okay, but, yeah. but, but we, don't have, we don't have to have an informational right. meeting. That's right. That's You're right. That's right. We've already had that. Yeah, already had just that. The, the cannabis and then the yeah, those right. two articles. It just seems like we're going to be. Right. Crunching ourselves time-wise. Yeah. That's well, my concern. We, we, can, <laughs> we, can have, we can have it on the same night. Matt said he'd oh be happy God. to do the... And Matt will, maybe Matt will serve us dinner? Yeah, maybe. Maybe there'll be brownies. <laughs> uh, no. That's that's awesome. <laughs> I, was, I was kidding. I was kidding, Tommy. <laughs> um, so that, I wanted, I wanted to brush on Article 4. It says, should the select board open all town roads to ATVs, which I do not agree with. I think it should not say open all. I think it should say open specific town roads or selected. Um, and we can list that or whatever, but definitely not all. Right. So. So we have to jump that. Hmm? Who's worrying this guy? I don't know. But it came from the ATV? No. Uh, no. no. Jim Barlow reviewed yeah. just a generic right uh worded uh motion about this topic yeah as we were able to find it's what we've what we found and jim barlow has confirmed that is that our process is, is we're unique and that we're doing it a little bit backwards what other communities have done is the select board using their legislative authority and the statutory authority have passed an ordinance first and then the ordinance was challenged and uh, a vote was had to try and overturn the ordinance, which is 
what most other communities, in fact, all of the communities have done. So in, in looking into terminology or, or wording for that article, there weren't any because nobody's done it this way. Mm -hmm. This being a, uh, uh, an Australian ballot is a non-binding vote. It is an advisory vote only. Right. He added the words in there, advisory, common, non-binding article. Right, but that's not so going to make sense to a lot so of people. Yeah. So it, it, it was difficult for Jim to grasp this article. He didn't, he didn't like it at all. Right. Period. He, does, he doesn't like the whole polling mm -hmm. feeling to it. He, yeah. He, he, but uh, that's our choice. Understood. understood. So, so this is... Said. This is to have, um, this is basically saying people are going to vote on this, and then the select board, based on the vote, has to still write an ordinance. Is that correct? We would, yeah, okay. based if they on vote that. Open vote. Vote. What's that? If they vote to open the vote. Right. Well, the vote. Right. That's, again, again this, it is completely up to the board because it is a non binding <laughs> vote. Oh, regardless, it's a non binding It's non binding vote. because it's, it's right. being done not on the floor. Right. And it's a... Uh, because the authority really lies with us. It's, you already have the statutory authority to yeah. open a road or, or roads right. at your discretion and open them with the support of an ordinance. It is the ordinance that met in normal processes, the ordinance that is then challenged. The ordinance comes first and then the challenge. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. I mean, not that we ever would, but this could fail and we could still, we could still allow it. If we wanted to, I'm not saying we would, but uh, but certainly would fail the way it's written right there, because I would vote no on it too. <laughs> because to be we're blind. saying Silver Ridge Road, um, and then whatever the connector road is called to um, to get the Hoagie, is that correct? Munson Avenue. Munson Avenue and Munson Avenue extension up the hill there behind the bank. Uh -huh. There's there's two or three roads there. What other roads? Well, it's a section of Trombley Hill, uh -huh. section of Center Road section of Munson Avenue and Silver Ridge Road. Fraser Road. Fraser Road, yeah. This... And why is Fraser Road on there? Because it doesn't connect to anything. That was a, a separate... Was separate... that because of Lisa Desjardins? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And it I don't know this... It's on the same Yeah, thing, but right? it doesn't... It's all within half mile. Right, but Fraser Road doesn't... Oh. Yeah, it's connected. It's right there. Right, but that wasn't part of... Um, when the whole discussion came up, that wasn't even part of, like, that didn't even go on the big board, board. the big bulletin board that we had in front of the people at the big meeting. Like, that was a separate thing. That well, Lisa had a separate of. one that mm -hmm. went with it. Nobody it. was separate. That. Nobody saw that. Well, she's had it out there, I can yeah. tell you that. <laughs> she had it out there before the other ones did. So, that's why we included it to be one big thing so it doesn't have to be uh -huh. microed out. Okay. But, but that question is approved. What? You have the right to open up any road. We do. You choose. We do. That ballot question is the absolute truth. Mm -hmm. Right. What you can do. Right. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't want to see all the roads open. No. Not that much. It's like what? At the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, voter, voters, um, Warren Town doesn't, we can't vote on articles like that. By Australian ballot, those are only for mm -hmm. four votes. Okay. So you mean this can't be, this can't go on the. It can go on there, but it doesn't really mean anything. In order to be it's, binding, it would have to be held on a floor vote. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like the more. So we shouldn't even have it on there. It shouldn't even be on there, because that's just going to add more chaos. We, we can we can reword that to match up with what you're giving for a direction tonight. Yeah. And put that back in front of the board uh, for review. Okay. I would say I would probably send it to Mr. Barlow mm -hmm. before sending it to you to get his yes. way in on it. Sounds good. Yeah, so I, I think there's discussion to be had about your process and what it means down the road. Yeah. In terms of precedent, or what do you mean? In a sense, okay. you have the, the statutory authority to open any and all roads. Yeah. Or select roads in this case is, is that was the intent to start with. Right. Um, by by going with this, it opens up an argument with specific roads named that you might perhaps have to take it in front of voters if any other road wanted to be opened up or any other stretch of the road. Right. 
or I, I don't know if that's the truth, and that's why I want to have Mr. Barlow. I'll, I'll write something up with those specific road names in it, yeah. and we'll send it to Jim for review and see what his take is on that. What about um, he, he town, just, town highways determined by the select board? Yeah. That's all right. I, no. I can throw whatever language in there. I, I think there were specific be. road names that we talked about at the informational meeting mm -hmm. in the summertime. Yeah. If you want me to go with those roads, again, I, I'm going to just tell you that Jim Barlow does not like the way we're doing this. Right. Mm -hmm. He would rather that we had passed an ordinance and then have someone challenge the ordinance and try and overturn it than to do it this way. This is a, this is a very expensive survey monkey. <laughs> it has no teeth. So who's telling you that, a lawyer? No, he, so, he wasn't his words. It's, it's one of the oh. words that were used in conversation today is that with being non-binding, you're really just, you're getting a temperature sensing from the voters as to what their feelings are. Mm -hmm. How it's worded is very important, but it also can be very important with ramifications down the road that are unintended. Sure. Yeah. So we want to make sure that Mr. Barlow gives us, or has an opportunity to weigh in. Right. Okay. Any so, more discussion on this? Well, morning? so we're just doing one that one thing yeah, at the top, and that. the rest are all going away. No, no, I, we didn't say that. Oh. Have, my suggestion for tonight would be for you to not take an action on this right. and table it. Yeah, unless Sarah and I do some work tomorrow, and if need be, if for timeliness or whatnot, we can have a special board meeting with a 24 hour advance notice, yeah. you know, and have a very select or very limited. Now. The warning to be the, the, the agenda yeah. item so yeah. type of thing, but I know there's some questions in your in your minds about the wording, so that yeah. I don't, we can send it once Barlow is if Mr. Barlow has taken a look at it, then we'll send it to you folks for review. Mm -hmm. If you like what you read, then we can talk about the perhaps setting up another meeting. Yeah, I think so. I just want to mention that we have three meetings until December seventh. Yeah. <coughs> when is our budget starting? Well, that's another thing we can talk about at some point, but um, supposedly the second uh, uh, select board meeting in November is when our first budget meeting is, but um, given the fact of the complexity of the budget we're facing, we may want to start doing meetings where we don't talk about the budget during a regular select board meeting we have other meetings like we used to right okay. where you have one meeting is just, budget just budget. Meeting. obviously it's an open meeting but it's just about the budget and you don't talk about the budget on regularly scheduled that's, that's why meetings like the odd monday it, it makes the meeting awfully long when oh. you do that when you have a lot of budget items to talk about so we that might be something you want to consider doing. Okay, thank you. I just want to start bringing your sleeping bag in here. Especially if, we, <laughs> if we're doing any um, informational type meetings within the next three meetings. Right. Um, is there a way if we're calling a special meeting just to vote on the wording of this, um, of these articles, if, um, if that can, it's like we can see it. I, I can't always make those special meetings, so I'm concerned about um, foregoing my vote. Like you could zoom in, though. You could zoom in. Okay. Sure. Okay. As long as they're held after 2.45. We won't do it without yeah. you. Okay. Oh, no, we have Okay. Well, we'll, I'll work with you, certainly, on making okay. it together. We'll carry it out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Even if you're not near Zoom, you can do a phone one, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm usually, it's usually just staying at home with my daughter. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're going to move to the next Number item. Number two. <laughs> what is the next one? Oh, discuss the appointment of the tree warden. Can you do that? Okay. Um, thank you. Thanks. So I've been in touch with um, the Morristown Conservation Commission um, about um, the fact that, so I'm looking at um, page six. 7 of 20 on the select board agenda. Mm -hmm. um, yep. It's just the email between um, Chris and Connolly and I um, that I copied um, to Eric and Sarah. Hi. Um, so the town of Morristown has not had a tree warden for the past couple years. And um, from what I understand, the select board is in charge of appointing one. Mm -hmm. um, and our last person was. Um, uh, David St Stevens. Yeah. So I'm just looking for support in terms of um, how do we how do we go about um, finding a new tree warden? Um, 
And he, I basically, I said, oh, well, if you could just recommend someone, that would be the easiest way. And he said, I can't think of anyone. So if you all have, um, um, you know, experience. Yeah. Um, we have, I mean, to be honest, I've only known two times at a time I've been on the board we needed a tree warden. And, um... Well, the thing is, so the thing about a tree warden, from what I understand, um, so it's like about resources, you know, like natural resources. And um, especially with like what we've, been experiencing and, and and it's and it's a way of um there's a lot of benefits of trees obvious like to me obviously you know in terms of um keeping it um, cooler in town and providing shade and and providing like a human scale landscape that is inviting and that brings you know mm -hmm. you know makes makes downtown in, inviting enough for people to want to hang out here and spend money um you know at the very least um and with all the strange weather we've been having with all the droughts and everything um and you know which i would attribute to climate change um a lot of the trees have been really stressed so in, instead of um having to deal with tre like getting you know cutting down trees like the expense of um, of that we would have someone who would be assessing our tree health in town and hopefully doing like mitigation me measures so we wouldn't have to go to the expense of getting rid of trees planting new trees you know and maybe he would be recommending like, oh, okay, this would be, you know, this would be a good um, drought resistant or like this would be a good tree species for, you know, like going forward the next 20 years based on like our current climate conditions. So um, I do think it is an important, like I, I, well, it's good to have yeah, it's good to have one. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know um, exactly all the ins and outs of it, but I do, I do feel like um, we do have like some really great new plantings in downtown and we, I, I would like to see more um and i'd also just want to make sure like some of our beautiful old trees like even like some of the maple trees like you know around the um the battle monument like right at that v um between you the know school grounds, yeah, yeah some of those look kind of stressed you know like just some beautiful old trees that add a nice sense to our downtown and i just, i don't want to see those go because we we don't mm -hmm. notice something you know some some disease or whatever. So um, I don't know. I'm just looking for um, a go ahead to like um, work with David and the MCC to look for a tree warden or and or what experience you all have um, in finding someone and what the process should be like. Should, do I put out a, a, call, a call out to where do I publish that? Like, how does that um, do I put it out on Front Porch Forum? Do I put it out on paper? Yeah. We put it on our website, Front Porch Forum, Facebook. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah. we okay. put it out there that we have a vacancy in sure. that slot. Uh -huh. Do you think, um, does it make sense to put an ad in the paper? Like, is that? It's not a paid position. Right. It's a volunteer, it's a volunteer position. Yeah. So we don't? It's, we don't. I don't know that we've ever looked to the tree warden to do assessments mm -hmm. right. uh, of our trees. Uh -huh. I mean, that would take an arborist. And yeah. If there was right. something along that line of a project, perhaps it would be the subject of a grant application. I, I don't know. I don't know what the uh, tolerance is to some of these grants, but yeah. a tree warden typically in, in a town only comes into play. What's a problem tree? Problem tree or property line disputes, you know, yeah. issues like that. But that's where we've used them before. Yeah. Right, but it, I mean, times. it says like David Stephen recommendation is um, that we find someone with a natural resource or arborist experience. There are training opportunities through the urban forestry program of the Department of um, Forest Parks and Recreations. Um, these are often in the form of workshops, possibly online programs. I hear what you're saying, like, I, I hear what you're saying of like what a tree warden typically does, but I also would challenge that we might want to be more proactive. It's just like a new age of weird weather. Um, and I don't want to get, to get into a climate change debate, but um, I know, like, I have a ton of trees on my property. They are all stuck, and I don't, and I don't think that's a, um, and I, and I worry, you know, like down the line, are we gonna have to like pay to have a bunch of trees? Right. Well, I think yep. I, 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 I ever don't have any issue. I'm just, yeah. I, I, it sounds like there, you have a <laughs> perception of what a tree warden would yeah. do for us. Uh -huh. right. And I don't know that there's any guidance in writing in the town policy. I mean, I'm not familiar with right. You know, uh, yeah. they probably could make it, you know, do right. something. Exactly. I mean, you, yeah. you can certainly right. build a program. Somebody is interested. Yep. Uh -huh. Yeah, we can make a 
description, job description. Okay. Um, yeah, I know plenty of people that know a lot about trees. Oh, you do? Great. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Foresters and past foresters and arborists and Corey, Corey Hathaway is a great. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Do you think guys. they would be in? Okay. No, they might not so have time, but <laughs> they certainly would know more than anybody up here. You know. So you would maybe help me reach out to him. Yeah. I know, I'd, 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 I'd get Corey's number. Okay. Uh, yeah, I believe they would have to be a resident of Morse. I don't know. Is it? I don't know. Well, I can Good think question. Of, kind of a, I would think they would have to be. Franz Gladick. I would think they would have to be. Really good. You know, if you were hiring one, you hire for to appoint somebody in town. I would think you'd want a taxpayer or somebody who lives in town to preferably. But you think? Should we do? Um, I can read to you what the um, handbook from Vermont Select Board says about um, tree wardens. It's I'll try to abridge it because I know it's almost eight o'clock here. Yeah, we're gonna be here a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, okay, the tree warden may not remove trees when the owner or leasee of a budding real estate annually controls all insects, pests, or tree diseases on trees within the limits of a highway or place abutting such real estate. The tree warden, the tree warden shall enforce, enforce all laws re relating to public shade trees and may prescribe rules and regulations for the planting, protection, care, and removal of public shade, shade trees pursuant to the ordinance adoption procedure. So, like, we don't know. I don't know if we have ordinances around that. Um, the tree warden may enter into agreements with the owners of land adjoining or facing public ways and places for the purpose of encouraging and carrying out a community-wide shade tree planting and or um, and preservation program. Um, only the tree warden or someone with his or her permission may cut a public shade tree. Healthy public shade trees and in the residential part of a residential neighborhood shall not be felled without a public hearing by the tree warden. It's basically the Lorax, I feel like. Uh, not, um, the, tree, um, the tree warden may request from the Commissioner of Agriculture recommendations for control of suspected infestations, which is what I'm concerned about, may implement recommended control me measures and may enter private land to implement these control me measures. So do we need to do a motion or just get just permission or just say let's put an advertisement and see what we get and appoint somebody based on that okay great sounds like a plan great yeah um and you're comfortable with me dropping something up and then i'll put it um email out to you all send it to us okay yeah. okay thank you sounds good now check on the resident requirement yeah yes okay good idea okay and where would I check on that? I, I can look at it for you. Okay. All right. Next agenda item. Consider RFP regarding the town-owned green space. Page eight. Okay. That's me again. So um, there's a little bit of... Um, so there's, there's two big questions about this um, our, um, proposed RFP. Um, I guess I can give you the background of why um, why I drafted it. Um, we were talking about the Sunoco station, the vacant property, and um, we were hoping that um, we would be able to work, um, we would either write a grant um, and purchase the property, which is um, not happening, but um, or work with a person who purchases that property um, to create a green space and municipal parking, especially because we need municipal parking in the downtown. Um, and so I would like to, um, and I, and I, hopefully the board, um, feels like, um, is on the same page with me on this. Um, I'd like to be more in the, in the driver's seat in this situation, um, or if, if another situation like this arises, where like not any random vacant property in Morristown, I'm not looking about, you know, I'm not talking about controlling that. I'm just thinking like um, really specific high visibility um, vacant <laughs> where it's like right in the corner, it's right at the four corners, like um, so that we could um, have a vision for what we're looking for and, you know, what control we could possibly have um, when someone comes to us, you know, wanting a permit, say, to alter, you know, once they purchase that property to like do improvements on the property, um, can we say like, is there, um, is there something we can, 
um, work out around um, conditional use or conditional permitting where we say, um, absolutely, you know, go ahead and do what you need to do to make this property viable for you and your business. But since it's such a visible property, you know, we'd like to see a green space here. We would like to see municipal parking and we'd like to see like wayfinding. Sounds um, like you want to have ordinance, like an ordinance around it. Well, I don't know. And so that's the big question. And um, what I'm looking, what I'm looking to do is to find, um, to find someone to consult with us so that the board can get together and say, um, you know, this is our vision for like, a, you know, vacant, um, vacant properties and high visibility locations in the downtown. Um, and, you know, if there are any kind of contingency permitting um, goals that we have. Um, and so, and I'm very new to this, so I don't know if I'm stepping out of the purview of the select board. What I do understand, for instance, from the new town plan, um, is that's one of the um, recommendations in the town plan that the select board look at some of the vacant properties and um, look to um, you know develop those in a way that um, really promotes like pedestrian traffic and um, you know. Um, uh, shopping and that kind of thing in, in the downtown you know to like keep our downtown vital and make it more vital um and i'm also seeing some like great new businesses coming in the downtown um so you know the more we can do to promote um just a pleasant looking um uh pleasant looking and human scaled development of our downtown the better and the more we can get out in front of it like the more like we already know like okay if this comes up this is what we want to do these are possible grant sources, and um, you know these are the these are the, the permitting um, contingencies we put out there. Then we know. Then we're not like scrambling at the last minute. You know, like oh, you know, oh wait, <laughs> wait. I don't know if we want that. You know, so um, so this RFP would just be for someone. And I did I I did talk to one group, the SE group, and um, um about. Um, consulting with us around creating a vision document and creating like very basic um, um, drawings. And Brian said, well, great, but let's, you know, let's put an RFP out. And so that we're not just, you know, giving it to the first person that I talked to that we're really putting it out in a fair way um, to bidders. So um, the second part of this is that um, I mentioned two properties because um, Bob and I talked just like informally about um, the property on the corner of Hutchins Street and is that Hutchins in Brooklyn, Portland? Hutchins in Portland. In Portland, um, and then I heard, you know, that property is that vacant property. It used to be Norm's Furniture forever. Oh, you um, mean the nephew? Building? The nephew property. Uh -huh. um, and so then I heard, like, when I put this um, proposed RFP out, like, you know, that that wasn't necessary. That wasn't really a a, a, an, a viable or available lot. But um, so I can take that second one out and just make it a more um, generalized um, a generalized mm -hmm. RFP or just say this is an RFP for this particular vacant lot. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what you all think. Uh, about definitely available. It's a word. And we we tried. Right. To, yeah. We tried right. to do something with it and we weren't yeah. able to right. come to a deal. Right. When I was recently in Boston, I did. I was on the the Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy Greenway, which used to be where the big dig went oh, underground, yeah. and yeah. so it's where the expressway used to go through. And it was lovely to be in this busy city with green space. Yeah. And I, I've been thinking about the Sunoco corner, and I mm -hmm. um, really don't want to see that to be just asphalt. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I would like, and then Nancy Banks in our last meeting talked about um, lack of outdoor space in the new village housing, and it kind of goes along um, with what she had talked about. So the problem we have with, with doing that, I like your ideas, I like all your ideas, but the problem we have is uh, we can't, as a, as a board, purchase a property like that or do something with it without voter approval right. and without having a, a viable plan. And right. even if we do, there's a good chance it's not going to pass because of what it does to the taxes. And it's just really tough. I think Brian will tell you past it's, uh, it's really difficult to sell something like that and for a town to own a property it's better if you can own it with somebody else and they'll develop part of it you right. develop part of it you know mm -hmm. we talked about that possibility but 
It's tough. I think that, really well, tough. and if we have some kind of like a vision, mm -hmm. a vision plan in yeah. place to look at, what can we looking forward to and, and asking developers to put this in? I know Nancy had talked about it's kind of off track a little bit, but the apartments going up, they don't have any green space, they don't have outside space for them. Well, my maybe. opinion, if we get this out in front of us, something to look at, that maybe the developer that's taking the parking spaces away and cutting down trees, maybe he could invest in it. Right, right. Because I, I, I look at the taxpayers, and I know that I've heard it a lot of it out in the country, mm -hmm. like sidewalks. You know, somebody wants a sidewalk. Well, I know a person says, well, I'd like a sidewalk by my house. There's more people walk down my road than they do on that street, mm -hmm. that type thing. So I think that we have to do some, but if there's any way to have the developers yeah, my, maybe yeah. contribute. Right, I think that's part of what I was yeah. thinking in terms of not making contingency. And this person here will tell us that, what we right. need and like, maybe like, like how vision. to get at it. Forward-looking vision. Yeah. Right. Grants and, yeah. and developer yeah. together. And, Right. Yeah. The other thing is we have to address, you know, there's the zoning, which yeah. pertains to one area of limitation or advantages on a property. And then there's, of course, the DRB you have to go through. Those are controls that are built in, and that's without covenants that run with the property. And then if you added on ordinances that, that also ran with the property, it would make it even more difficult to develop it. You know, it, it's it's tough. I wanted you to speak about that, yeah. Gary. I know you're. Uh, I could hear you thinking. Yeah, you you got to be careful. I mean, zoning addresses most of the issues that you talked about. I mean, uh, especially in downtown here, you're required to have commercial on the ground floor with commercial or residential overhead. Uh, required to have sidewalks. Required to have so much parking, but. If you're within so many feet of a municipal parking lot, uh, such as the Hudson Street project, they don't even provide any parking. Right. So I don't think that's fair either. They're taking all the parking or a lot of the parking out of the municipal parking lot. If they get there or something, if they don't, I don't know where they're going to park. Right. First come, first serve. Um, and they're required to do a streetscaping, uh, required to furnish bicycle racks. Multiple things that their developers are required to build, and if you scrap them too much, you're going to end up with a hole in the ground. Right. Because they can't afford to develop it. Right. I, I understand unless that. A, yeah. Unless it's a non profit, is the only way, and that's the only way that Arthur's got developed is a non profit organization. Right. Because no profit making developer can afford to develop those areas. They're not going to walk in with those restrictions. Well, what I, I okay, um, I hear, I hear what you're saying, and I, I think, um, I don't want to sell this as something that's going to be overly restrictive, um, and it certainly is pro development. I, um, I, I do believe that um, part of the town plan, and um, that we're pretty much on the same page, is that we're looking for high density downtown development what i'm yeah, and all we're doing is getting complaints for the high density development well, that we're doing but, that, but, see, but i think that i think there's a nuance to it that um that i really want to address and i just want to um and i'd like to get out ahead of it um i think from what i hear and you know like our job is to represent you know the people in the community right so i hear from certain people you all hear from certain people mm -hmm. I'm um, sure it has something to do with like our friends and alliances and all that kind of thing. Um, but what I hear is a lot of support for the, the development, like, oh, the buildings look good. Like we do need more affordable housing. Like I remember, like I personally remember when I was in my twenties, I couldn't find a place to live that I could afford in Morrisville. I grew up here. I had to go live with my, back with my mom, you know? So people from what I hear support the high density, um, development and even the woman who spoke last week supports it in a way but what we're looking for or what people in town are looking for is um how are we going to keep going in this direction but like to keep make to keep make making the downtown feel like a, approachable and quaint enough and um and enjoyable and a, a beautiful, beautiful and like 
So the more and more people that we have living stacked up on top of each other, the more they're going to be looking for green spaces. And the more people we're inviting into our downtown for um, for shopping, the more they're going to be looking for like, you know, okay, so like so-and-so goes into the store to do this shopping, but so-and-so like really doesn't like to go into this, doesn't really care about shopping and wants to sit on the bench and, you know. Um, so it's a lot about like, how do we keep doing the development, but then how do we just like, if there's there's a big piece of it about um keeping it looking um beautiful and keeping the character of our downtown and i don't even necessarily feel like it's going to be overly restrictive and that would be all part of like bringing someone in to like to consult on this and we would all like voice our concerns around not wanting you know not wanting the not wanting to bring in a bunch of restrictions but i mean a tree costs what like 200 bucks i mean I don't think well, that's going to be required to plant trees. Right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, I don't know that. I don't know that people. I don't see that in all of the downtown development. Like, I see a lot of high density housing coming in, and I see a lot of like paved parking, um, which creates more heat. And I'm just thinking about the livability. Like, we don't want it to get to. We don't want it to tip the scales to the point where people are like. Uh, it's kind of crummy and hot in the downtown. Like we, we want people to be like, yeah, people live here. It's developed. There's a lot of people in downtown, but it's pleasant. You know, like it's still a pleasant place to be. It's a pleasant place that we want to come to shop. I'm not seeing like, I'm not seeing the tree plantings. I'm not seeing like the human scale, like the thought going into like, where are all these people going to like hang out? Where are they going to, you know, how are they going to get around? Um, and how are we really like continuing to, like revitalize our downtown and make it make like bringing people in and bring people like who want to shop here and spend money here mm -hmm. um so that's i maybe i'm wrong gary i just i don't and i you know i should educate myself more around what the drb does and does not require and what the zoning does and does not require what's that <laughs> no it is it is true that i think a lot of people don't realize the length the drb goes to yeah and our zoning goes to to make everything so it's what you're describing at. yeah you know I, there's I, a but, lot. Yeah. but i don't think there's i don't think there's any harm with us no. having a vision and having someone no. coming out coming here who doesn't have doesn't live here can give us a fresh perspective of what is a plus first possibility denny one thing, them apartments are low income. No. 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 <laughs> well, I know, I know, I have a friend who that could not, yeah, I know. Right now the bedroom yeah. And that's the way you go. If you want to change it, uh, I've talked to different investors in town and not the ones building the apartments. They will not build any more retail because nobody comes to Marshall for any retail. Right, but then the question is, then, like, is it is it like a chicken and the egg question? You know, why is that? Like, is it? And, it and that has yeah. a lot to do with, you right? Amazon, yeah, you're part of the problem. Absolutely, <laughs> and and I've talked to I, I I've talked to Todd Thomas about this too. Like, but there's a mix of things that attract people into the down, downtown, and it's not just retail stores. It's also like, um, it's well, also it's the also going to be torn down. I understand because whoever on that sick of what goes on in there, right over here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, they have issues in Marks. We do. We do have. Yeah. You know, and it's. I understand green space, but I also understand don't use them apartments as they want green space. Them are apartments. They're not cheap. It's their choice. Right. Whether they have a lawn, they know that going into it. You know, as far as them over there. I know the ones down by Marshall Lumber have a lawn. They have a porch. Because mm -hmm. I go and look at all these. Yeah, Pope Meadow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard. And when you say a tree costs 200 bucks, Okay, a tree, a tree costs 200 bucks. Who's watering that tree mm -hmm. every day? Yeah. Can't ask the highway to keep doing them. You know, and. Well, that's a question, too. I mean, I, I hear your. Yeah. Tax base. Yeah. All this falls into that. 
I hear I yeah. for green. Yeah. I mean, I love what they do at the Oxwall. They got a community garden. That van shell down there needs to be locked off for power, not just shut off. And I'll put a lock on it next time I go down with the van. Because something Jason with get you. hurt. Bring Jason with you. <laughs> yeah. So but, I, uh, I, it's I, just yeah. the thoughts are there. Yep. But you got to look at the big picture. And I like hear, Brian I hear said, you. The yeah. The big picture there is a tax base. You got your probably the best lot right now in Marshall. Yeah. That's available. Mm -hmm. So that would be, yeah, it'd be nice. Maybe the dude who wants the cannabis to pass may open a shop there. I don't plant them kind of trees out there. Right. <laughs> you know, I I don't know. I don't know the answer, but I know some of the things they're talking about. Okay, I Denny, I hear your perspective and I, I appreciate it. Like, Maybe. and people are for sure. I I chose to buy a house in the downtown, but I chose a house that had trees. Like that's okay. But um, but what you're saying is that we shouldn't have green space because it costs too much money and because people do nefarious things when there's like a van shell or a gazebo. Th that's true too. But people are doing nefarious things no matter where. Like no matter what, they'll find a place to do it. I also like take my daughter for walks in town. I mean, so many people, like the more and more people we're putting to the downtown, the more and more people who are gonna be um, occupying these spaces and like building community, you know, and hopefully like feeling a part of the community and maybe volunteering for community um, things like be being, on the, being in the fire department, you know, maybe, being maybe a tree warden. Right, warrant. and I know, and you're saying that it cost, you know, it costs money to water a tree, absolutely. But it also costs money if everyone's trying to like run their air conditioning because um, the downtown is too warm. Like it all, there's a balancing act with Them everything. Trees ain't gonna warm up your downtown. They do actually. There is there is evidence that um, not the few you want. <laughs> <laughs> the more blacktop you've got, the more buildings you've got, the hotter it is. Yes, and that's why you need trees to offset it. Exactly. A lot of trees. Not just, a, no, I mean, one tree makes a huge difference. We'll talk some other time. We can. <laughs> I mean, I, I hear I'd what like you're saying. I'd like to talk with you, but it's getting later. Me and you will just have a conversation. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I mean, we can agree to disagree. I just, well, that's it. That's yeah. the way I look at it. Yeah. I don't, I'm not thin skinned, so it's all good. <laughs> I, okay. I'm glad you told us that, Danny. <laughs> uh, we would have never known we that. We would have never known that. You were thin, not so thin. Oh, so, but I appreciate your energy and everything, and I understand, you know, I like the ideas. It's just a tough sell. It's just tough. So, I don't know. Okay, so I don't know. It may be a tough sell to you, mm -hmm. and it may be a tough sell to Denny, but I don't know that it's a tough sell to everyone in the downtown because, or in Morristown, because for I, for one, and for many people that I know and who would support my candidacy, um, we, bought, we bought into Morristown and into the idea of Morristown as a, an approachable community where you can um, feel like safe and enjoy the downtown and you can walk around and you can um, raise a family. And <coughs> I just wanna make sure that the downtown continues to be approachable and beautiful and I and I don't and I and I know that people are feeling very worried about all the development and very worried that um, if we don't take um, proactive measures that we're going to lose the character of the downtown I like the idea what what do we if we decide to go forward this Eric how do we do this uh, it's just, I question go ahead Jamie Jess are you are you proposing that you would write this RFP she did. I did, yeah. Okay, and yeah. are you charging for that? Am I charging money for it? Yes. No. So it's no cost to write the RFP and put it out there. Right. Mm -hmm. And then to get the responses back, that doesn't cost any money either. Exactly. Like reviewing the RFPs doesn't cost any money. Yes. The only thing that costs money is if after you receive one that you like, you decide to go forward with it. Yeah. So I don't see why there's an issue money or otherwise, if Jess is going to take this on for herself, to at least put it out there and see if she get back. Yeah, I didn't say there was. Okay, I just, yeah, I, me just I didn't disagree. I, 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 I agreed with it sure from I just the just beginning. Did, I just wanted to understand what, you know. Yeah, my what only point was uh, voter approval. You know, you gotta have voter approval for anything big you try to do. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah. Do you need voter approval for Jess to do an RFP? 
No, no, they don't. Yeah. No. Or, or even for them to come in and we'll hire them to give us that. That's yeah. even minor. Yeah. But to buy the property, if let's say we say we went up there, two issues I got to say quick, like because I don't want to keep this going. But one thing is, is taking taxpayers' money like to buy that lot to do something with it. I don't yeah, know. Well, that's with, my okay. thing is I think that's way down the road. I think right. Before we even get there, we need and to, you know, it would be a nice idea to see who responds right. to what they have to say. Well, and the idea, too, is not to use a bunch of taxpayers' money to fund a project. It's no. to write right. grants. It's to write grants. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing is not just the taxpayers' money. The minute you buy that property and we turn it into a parking lot for us, then the taxpayer is not paying taxes on that. Right. And, I, and I think that okay. are, my, my understanding is that an RFP might give you some ideas and right. understanding of uh, what would happen with the taxes or what would be some options to offset that. I don't know the answer to that. I don't think it's black and white. I think there could be different options there. So, yeah, I think you know, there's no, no hard in looking. Resident, no. I, I think it's a great idea if Jess is willing to take that on and write that down. Well, so not to keep this going, I mean, <laughs> do we need, well, I don't, you know, I mean, I like to hear all of this, right. because I, I, I think if it went out to vote in the town to buy that, you probably see it shot down. Yeah, and I'm not even talking about The I'm village, you wouldn't, yeah. but the town, I mean, everybody, they I'm might, not sure. no, they I'm might not. not. I'm not yeah. sure either. I, yeah. I'm with Brian, but. But it's our, but I'm all set to do this, and, and I don't know if you need a motion or, or just a, no, I say go for Blessing. it. You don't have to have a motion. Blessing. Do I, I don't need a motion to put out an RFP. Okay. No. You're not spending no, any money. Okay. Uh, just for clarification for the note, what yes. is your RFP for? It's in the, uh, it's in the package. The RFP. Oh, you have it in the Yeah, on page, sorry, on page 8 of 20. Yep. Okay, sorry. It's in there. Um, look through it. And so I can change, um, do you, would you all rather get back to me uh, on email? requesting to change this um, because I know we had some question about whether it was like for a single vacant property or with for multiple whether it's going to be a broad vision document or just broad. okay yeah me too so I'll just say um I'll just take out for two instead of saying for two high visibility properties I'll just say for high visibility yeah. vacant properties yeah okay yeah okay Thanks for doing that. You're welcome. Yeah, I would, I would limit it to just two. Yeah. Okay. So vision is all Make it broad. Done. Okay. Great. Right. Make it broad brush. Yay. Okay. Great. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Okay. Right. And so I'll forward that to um, Sarah Hyde, and she'll put it out there. Yeah, Absolutely. is that how the process works? Uh, it can. If we, I mean, the SI group you've talked about, if there are other groups out there you're yeah. aware of that we yeah. specifically can just send it to, yeah. okay. that's preferred. Yeah. I'm not, okay. I'm not familiar with that that area of the market so uh -huh. um i can what i can do is just research this i group i'm sure dr google can give me yeah, that's other, <laughs> yeah. other companies yeah. in the area yeah. so we'll do a little research on it okay so um so you're saying send it to sarah also do a little google for on the sd group and see if other um other consult consulting agencies come up and also send it directly I'm, to them yeah i'm not asking you to do any more work I think you can turn that over us. Okay. We can do some of that and okay. throw out the list of what we come up with as far as companies. Okay. Um, we'll look, you know, locally and then yeah. expand to regionally, but okay. don't, I don't want to send, you know, money out too far out too far. We'd like to spend our money locally if we can. Yeah, as absolutely. Well as we can, so right. we see what's out there. Okay. And then, but we will put it in the paper as well, or it's not worth it? I don't, I'm not sure. If there's companies in this area that do this kind of work, yeah. that'd be great for them to read yeah. that. But if I already know who the company is, I can send it direct. Right. So I, I, I'm not sure we're going to get a, a great response here from a company, a former right. company, maybe an individual that takes interest in it, but I'm not sure right. that's what we're seeking. I think we're looking for a professional company who's... Just for you. Yeah, that, that's their forte. That's kind of what right. I thought. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I just think um, even, especially with like the new reality of so many people working mobile, and if it is, for, like Jenny's mm -hmm. saying, a, a bedroom community, maybe we mm -hmm. do have a lot of people who we don't know about who actually live here who would do this work. I, I, I can send word out to the uh, the, the uh, town ministers, town managers uh -huh. uh, chain and, okay. and see what other municipalities have used. Maybe Great. larger ones yeah. would have a better yeah. idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, come on, yeah. city to down. Yeah, because yeah, SD Group yeah. has worked with um, Middlebury, Montpelier, um, St. Albans, um, 
and Chester and Edna's first call. So. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. Okay. Thank you. Moving on to number four, approve the bid for the Ford F three fifty Super Cab. Kevin. Sarah. 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 <laughs> so I've done four bids. I only have pack two. One for me and the guys. One for me and the um, my recommendation is that we award it to the Union Bank because they have the lowest interest rate. Mm -hmm. I make a motion we do that. I have a motion by Brian. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Judy. Is there any further discussion? If you approve this, I'm going to have the Union Bank uh, drop the paperwork, and once I have it, they'll have to come and sign it this week so that Kevin can get struck. Okay. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, approve the new road name, Leslie Small Lane. This is from a uh, development, an option development down on Randolph Road where they had approval for a road name through the, the development, mm -hmm. but now they built an offshoot from that road uh, mm -hmm. that is, has three properties on it. And it looks like they're going to develop uh, trying to get in front of this. And actually, Leslie Small submitted uh, the Leslie Small Lane road name. Yeah. When I, when I looked at this, A was way I don't believe it's paved. It is not. It's a private it, road. It looks like a driveway. It's a private road. Right. So, yeah. I don't know. Is it going to be confusing to rescue and fire and police with this? In, is it going to be hard to find? Maybe GPS it isn't hard to find, but it just seems kind of odd. That that that's where it is. A ro this road just looks like a driveway, even though it's a private road. Yeah. It, that's what I thought about. Yeah. Do you know where it is, building? Yeah. No. The E911 folks said, you know, you can just leave this until people build their homes. Well, we've recently run into problems with that when neighbors don't get along. <laughs> so at this point, the neighborhood is not fully developed. There's one house going to be right. built. And Leslie Small still owns at least one of the lots. He's More still time. friendly with these folks. It's better to get this done sooner than later. Sure. Um, Originally, they thought it could be just an offshoot of Ava's Way, but mm -hmm. it, it can't be because there's too many properties along that, that little offshoot road. So right. it, it kicked in the requirement for the road naming. I, I mean, I was trying to think about it. I mean, there are other roads off dirt road. It just looked, I know where this is, and I know that Ava's Way just looks like a driveway. And I don't know. If it, it's a, it was more about rescue and there's a lot fire. Of like yeah. yeah. Really? It's not terribly yeah, you're looking for a new 911 address and all of a sudden there's five ambulances one driveway. Yep. So like, Very common. <laughs> so it's not anything you're concerned. Either, you, you can just rock slow and look for smoke. <laughs> <laughs> you're driven by three times. That's a more They're really good at it. They'll give us a crossroad. Yeah. Give us, you pull in, you're going to go past the first house, take the next left. Mm -hmm. So they're, we got a lot of good help. We got the active 911, which kind of put us in the right idea of the map. If you've ever worked in the fire or rescue or police, you, you see right away what they do there. That was, that was my only But thank you. Yeah, the, um, once this is approved here, Abby sends it on to the state for plotting. Onto the map, so it, it's an automatic transfer into the 911 maps. Uh, so they the dispatchers have that, they can direct them right in. If there's a motion for this, if you would uh, make it to allow me to sign on behalf of the board, well, let's uh, send this around. Is there a motion? So moved. Well, that's the small lane, right? Yes, in a second. A second. Second by Jet. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, uh, approved right of way permit for 147 Welch Way and Lazy Lane. This is a construction dig that's going to happen. Um, 
they've got a projected timeline of October 19th through October 22nd. I had put word out locally through Todd and to the contractors in the area that uh, I was not going to be favorable about approving uh, road cuts after the 15th of October. Mm -hmm. uh, weather can change drastically quickly, and we need time for this with good compaction to, you know, take care of the paving over the top. This is a dirt road. So it's outside the village, uh, less volume of traffic, so I, I don't have an issue uh, extending that out. Uh, it's a pre-November finish, so um, they know that they're going to have to do the one-foot lifts compaction. Yeah. Kevin knows about the project. He'll go up and inspect the final product. And Good. All right. Can, Can I make a motion? motion to approve the date for William, William and Amanda Guy on 147 Wealth Way. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Second by Judy. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Number seven, accept resignation of police officer. Officer McCullough from my department has a uh, he chose a different path in life. He is actually enrolled at the Grant Technical College in the Diesel Mechanic School. And uh, he's well on his way to, to uh, doing his midlife change of occupation. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Do I have a motion to accept this? Accept with regret uh, Scott McCollum's resignation from the Morristown Police Department, effective October 18, 2021. I have a motion by Judy. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Gary. Any further discussion? I want to say a big thank you from us. I will ask it as well. Great. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, to appoint a part time police officer. Yeah, this is just a uh, retirement year of probation and for the so it's more of a procedural thing to do. Yeah, I went to the police academy with him. <laughs> yeah, I keep an eye on him anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, do you have an appointment for him? The chief did. Okay. Do I hear a motion on this? No motion. Motion by Brian, second by Judy. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. I will have that uh, letter and signature ready for you when you come in to sign Sarah's document. Okay. I'll find it here. I'm going to text, I'm going to text Bruce or Snapchat it. All right, nine, authorized renewal of 2022 HRA. That's Tina. Every year, I usually come to you with this. This year, for the year 2020 calendar year, we received our information from Blue Cross Blue Shield about what their out of pocket maximums are going to be and what the um, actual level of the um, premiums are going to be. Premiums actually went down. Uh -huh. I know. Very surprising. It, it uh -huh. was very surprising, but the premiums went down. Um, actually, they went down for our dental insurance as well, which is, is really good news. But of course, as it always happens, the out of pocket maximum levels increase very slightly. They don't usually increase a lot, but very slightly. Um, and our HRA has been adjusted every year based on these levels. So I'm coming to you asking for you to adjust them again to uh, reflect the more current out-of-pocket maximum levels. Okay. Does anybody answer? I know you haven't been on the board yet. Our insurance fund is basically, it's a, it's a fund that we have created to help all of our employees with that um, out-of-pocket uh, cost deductible. Mm -hmm. Because the plan that we are on, we are able to keep our levels very reasonable for the premium for employees and for the town because we have a high plan. Right. So what we have been able to do is, is fund an HRA, which is um, basically a pledge to all our employees saying that the town will pledge to give up to a certain dollar amount 
for you every year. And if you use it, you can use it, obviously, that it's up to you. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, the town keeps the money. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not given to the employee. Right. And that's what this is about. Um, in doing it that way, we have been able to keep our funding of our HRA at a minimum. Um, we actually are going to be able to, by looking at the levels of the HRA fund, and we'll talk about this budget time, we're able to drop the funding level that we have used in the past from 55 to 50 percent, which is saving taxpayer funds. So this, all this does is increase the promise of how much we would pay out of pocket, but we never end up really having to pay that for every employee audience. So, but we can talk about that more, but that's what this is about. It's the annual thing where we um, adjust it based on out of pocket maximums. Okay. Okay. All right, do we need a motion for it? And sorry, yeah. did we get, I don't see anything in the packet about that. Is that just some? Well, there, I didn't write up anything. I didn't know. Motion. I didn't know if I just didn't see it. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wrote up a motion for it. Yeah. Um. But when we talk about budgets and stuff, that will come back. Okay. Home again. Okay. You got the motion, Gary. Well done. Yep. Yeah. I make a motion to authorize renewal for the 2022 HRA with levels of ninety-seven hundred dollars per person. Adult plus children and family plan and four thousand three hundred and fifty dollars per single family. As a note, the increase from twenty twenty one funding levels to twelve levels above are one hundred and fifty dollars for single plans and three hundred for all other plans. Thank you. I'll second it. All right, I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, approve the warrants. Do I have a motion to approve them? Make a motion to approve the warrants. I have a motion by Judy. Do I have a second? I second. Second by Jess. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, TA report. Uh, not a whole lot for you folks. The, uh, Went to a seminar last week, two days, and um, met a whole bunch of folks that did the same thing I do, but probably do it better. So it's, um, <laughs> it was very informative. Uh, I got a lot out. And uh, beyond that, we have uh, received word that the CPIW for the upcoming year is 5.9%. Ouch. Planning a budget season that provides a significant hill to climb. That's a cost of living increase. Uh, so our budgets will reflect uh, the employees taking a step, plus the cost of living being applied to the scale, five point nine percent. So it's that's not going to be steps on the scales go anywhere from one and a half to one and a half to two percent, depending on what union you're in and. I haven't seen it. I haven't heard of that high ever. Mm. That'd be fun for budget season. Yeah. That's how much we'll have to increase the salary. Is wow. that what you're saying? Or... It's gonna, we're going to have to accommodate That's... the budget so it can mm -hmm. work. Contract with the agreement we have with the unions is that yeah. CPIW will be applied to the scale mm -hmm. um, after, they take the, after they take their step. They take a step and then they apply to the scale or have to. No. The scale gets increased by the cost of living, and then they get a step. So, um, you know, people can get, you know, anywhere from, you know, 7.4% increase to, you know, 7.9, right. depending on what union you're in. Right. Okay. This because is also similar. This is what the cost of living for Social Security would be, too. It would be similar to this. Questions for Eric? Thank you. Select word concerns, Gary. 
Uh, I don't have a concern. I just would like to bring everybody up to date that we had a meeting at uh, the corner of Bridge Street and Bypass at the vacant lot down there with the state on Wednesday, I believe it was. Todd and myself and uh, Tina Ball from the state and another assistant of hers. And it looks like uh, we're going to get our grant that we requested to update that as a uh, parking right until next year, of course. You now, but uh, said everything looked good. All they had to do was get it approved by FHWA, and they were in on the bypass. Mm -hmm. So it looks good. They'll be turning that into a probably a 21 or 22 parking lot. Parking right, yeah. Cool. Are there restrictions on how long the car can be in the parking lot? The only restriction that Tina mentioned was we had to make accommodations for RCT to be able to pull in there and turn around. Some say no overnight parking, though, I think. Um, I, I don't I've seen know them before. What, yeah, I don't that think it's ordered. For ship workers, that would be contrary to the, what the, okay. it's used for. Typically, if a vehicle's been there for a period of time, as long as it is properly registered, we can't do anything about it. It's a public parking lot. If there's an expired registration, it can be told. Mm -hmm. Are there any charging station requirements? There are not that I'm aware of. Okay, thanks, Gary. Yep. Judy. I have nothing. Thank you. Jess. Um, I have two things. One, I was just curious about if there's an update on the Washington Highway paving project. We have. Uh, over the last week, the highway guys have raised up working with water and light and raised up all the fixtures. Uh -huh. We have, I think, three manhole covers that will take just the riser application. It takes a couple of minutes per to have that ready to go. Uh, EJ has been uh, notified at Hutchins um, every Monday morning. Kevin calls him. Yeah. That's when they set their schedules for the week <laughs> and lets them know we are ready to go. And the call this week was, was the same. We're ready to go. Uh -huh. All pictures are in place whenever you want to put it down. Come on. We were, but we were worried. Well, we were hoping that that would happen maybe last week because there was a warming trend but well we don't have a date yet it's, we won't have a date it's going to be when they can sit us in. do you think it's going to happen before you think it's going to happen before winter it has to but we they won't okay. put they'd be liable for putting it down if the pavement was too cold to receive it and then it just starts flaking up it uh -huh. goes here uh -huh. they have to come back and redo it at their expense so they okay. they're and put it down when it's too cold okay and and, and would they be liable to reimburse the town if like they don't do it and the no the department has to go put all the fixtures down again? Nope, they aren't liable for that. Oh. We're at their mercy, and, and we beg to get them to get in here. So okay. Um, and then I was curious about um speaking of um pavement cuts um what the timeline what we're looking at I'm getting that um Bridge Street cut. Um, paved back over. I haven't been over there in a few days. Hey, but it's awesome. Beautiful. Thank you. I haven't been there in a couple, mm -hmm. since last week. Okay. Thank you. Brian, all the same. And I'm upset. You were on the gift wall. No understand what's the well, we got some old business here. This okay. review and approve uh, updated road naming policy. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. Mm -hmm. This nothing's changed on that. Yeah. Pretty uh, yeah. other business. Yes. If you would just leave it to there. Sure. And that's how I believe. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, this is a special agenda item. This is. Uh... If you want to wait and do it under other business, Bob, would be more appropriate under there. We've got the old business to do first. Yeah, we can do that. We'll do that first. We'll do the old business first and then do this. Review and approve updated road naming policy. Folks, I brought this back in front of you because after the last time there was many occasions that had concerns over, and specifically, I remember Judy talking about the penalty that was in here on the third page, item number seven. 
Yeah. I think, so, I, I think I'm okay with that. Yeah. Okay. So we're certainly, I'm just looking to see if there are any other changes that you want made to the document. We'd like to get this in the process of getting approved uh, so we can get it in place. The significant change in this is the naming of the streets and private road names is the language matches up with the zoning bylaw language. The zoning bylaw language was changed some time ago to indicate that a road naming has to happen on a private road when there are three lots on any developed, no, developed no road. House. Correct. The old street naming summary convention that I have a copy of here, which is signed last in 1996, talks about three residences. So uh, changes have been made over the years. And uh, so those changes are reflected in here that the private roads should find as a uh, shared driveway of any length having three or more lots on it. Well, this, says, this says residences, what we have. Uh, there should have been a new copy put out on your table. Um, oh, okay. Sorry. Yep. Okay. So it could be no houses at all on there. Correct. So yes. the, the zoning laws say that if a developer, if somebody buys a plot of land, they want to subdivide it. If they create three lots on that with a driveway, that road needs to be named uh, in order for the, the subdivision to have a name affixed to it. And that kicks in the E911 review and the requirements there. It's just what you were explaining about the lessons. Right. And I talked to Abby at length today about you know this. Once this becomes a, our ordinance to follow, um, I've given her the charge to look at our town in grid squares, basically, and try and weed out any of those areas that have already been developed that would meet this criteria because what we ran into with the problem was uh, a developer kicking in the road naming ordinance to the zoning bylaws because he created these lots and now on this private access road where there were already lots there but the old road naming ordinance conflicted to the zoning bylaws the road naming ordinance didn't require the one residence on that road to have a road name they have a, a cody hill address the zoning bylaws required the developer who was creating these new lots to create a road name along through there and asked him to work with the, the residents on the road. It uh, it fell apart. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's unfortunate because I, I don't think initially there was hard feelings at all. I think there was a welcoming to the neighborhood. I, I think there, there wasn't uh, anything other than there was a timeline by the developer to get a road name in in time. Initially, a road was name was submitted. It didn't pass muster E911. And he felt the crunch to get the property in front of the DRB. So he had to have the road named. We had one more meeting at the select board before the DRB meeting. So he submitted a, a road name that was not one that had been shared with the neighbors. And that passed muster here, it passed muster at the 911 board, and therefore the, the road became named. And it wasn't that the folks that live there object to the road name, it was the process that they objected to, because they lived there a long time and they felt they should have some say in the road naming. This is, this is an attempt to start to align that language so that we don't run into those situations. And that's why I've had Abby once this is in place, start looking at the whole town to see if there are other developments that are already in place, but now would fall under the road naming so that we can start that process. Mm -hmm. And uh, and hopefully do it in, in a time and manner such that there's no neighborhood disputes as a result. So is it, is it um, any place grandfathered? <clears throat> this is going to go back? And... No, because 911 is the driving force. Okay, good. Yep, the good. Okay, good. Residents. good. <clears throat> All right, do you need a motion about this? I need a motion that you uh, accept. Accept this. Yeah, accept this as the uh, updated version. Make a motion to accept the new version. Right, street naming and number and ordinance. I second it. I have a motion and a second. So you need a date discussion. on it. Dated when? You can make it effective one November if you'd like. Effective November 1, 2020. We have to warn this. Uh, 
I have to put this out more as an update to the ordinance. So okay. I have to throw a little bit of a process. Was, um, sorry, did, was this addressed by the question that Judy asked and I just didn't get it? Um, where it says on page two, um, new streets proposed via the town subdivision process, process shall be named by the select board prior, prior to any zoning approval. Does that just mean someone's going to come to us? With the name, and we're going to say yay. We're not going to be sitting here naming roads. No. Okay. No. Correct. I don't need that. I mean, that sounds fun. We don't call the names. You know how many points we have to bring to flip? We just do a few yay or nay. Okay. I have a signature okay. page here on the back of the ordinance. Okay. Please. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It was Brian. Yes. Brian. Motion is passed. All right, other business. So I do have special presentation. Um, this is dated October 18th, 2021 to Sarah Haskins. It is in recognition of the award of appreciation given to you at the 85th VMCTA conference, which demonstrated a commitment to the betterment of the VMTCA, making a significant contribution to the VMTCA displaying characteristics and, and integrity and leadership and for receiving the respect and confidence from her peers. We, the select board of the town of Morristown, give you our praise and heartfelt thanks for representing our community with a high level of professionalism, for always caring for people and for leading by example. We are very grateful to have you as our town clerk and treasurer. Thank you. Yes. I sent you all an email. You may not have seen. I got it. Uh, reapportion them every ten years. Expect um, on top of your budget meeting to be all the other things that um, we need to um, have. For meeting um, on this, we have a draft to the end of November for the VCA. Okay. Is this, is this for the VCA or is this for the select board? Uh, it's VCA, which is the uh, this is. When you take a look at it, you'll see the town of Morristown we are represented by two representatives, 1900 and something of our population represented by one representative and the remainder are represented by the other. Who do we, who do we get joined with? Uh, on one side is Wolcott and Elmore and the other side is Stowe. So we're, we're joined with Stowe? Well, part of the town is. Yeah. We've been split. So there's a small. So there's going to be one. There's all maps. There's links and maps and maps and everything. So, um, Elmore, Wolcott, Stowe, and Elmore. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to be able to join with Yeah, no, right. no, 
I, this was just an article that oh. a comment that somebody else had made, and I thought it was a pretty interesting idea. So David Adams. So if this gets approved, then the Board of Education will have to Weighing in on this or approving it? Yeah, out. it's a, um, it's mandated that the justices of the peace with the select board meet and we respond. Oh, I mean, if we say hell no. Okay. Yeah, say that, Judy. <laughs> Can't say that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what happens every ten years? I got you. So you're, on the census. So oh. you're talking one one district and so. And then the combined district was stolen in Morristown. Yeah, so and then, still and then another district was Morristown. Mm -hmm. So Morristown is going to be in two, two, three different districts. No, two. two. Morristown has two districts, still has two districts. Yeah, but we're going to be part of the Stowe's second district. Um, It looks like it's more, yeah. So it's more of the Morristown district with a tiny piece of cell. Correct. They only, they're only 900 people over. So, mm -hmm. so we're going to end up with one, two, yeah. three <laughs> representatives. Yeah. Two. Uh, one. One was Dell. One was Dole. And one, one was Wilkin and. Um, oh, okay. So there's not a center. No, it's not a centerpiece. Okay. okay. So we're going to furnish like 3,100 people to school. That's correct. No, no, they're going to furnish. They're going to furnish us. They're going to furnish us. Because then Stowe will have a separate district. Right. Um, if this passes, it's just Stowe. Uh, right. There are other districts. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> That's good. And that and that affects. Every, everything. 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 Nice. It affects who you call based on where you live. Uh -huh. your, your representative may just change. Or right. it, it, it you're going to get, you're gonna get a lot better representation that way. You stop and think about it. The people in our district now, Morrisville, Elmore, Worcester, and Woodbury, you can't get there from here. It's not fair. It's not only not fair to the representatives. It's less fair to constituency in Woodbury and, and Worcester because it, you got absolutely nothing in common with Worcester and Woodbury. Elmore is a little bit better, but uh, Elmore and Wolfett would be, and Morristown would be a lot better mix than Morristown and Elmore, Worcester and Woodbury. I think I think people would be a lot lot more happy with. Single representative districts, and you get a lot better coverage. You get a bigger bang for your buck, I believe. But, you know, you you'll be able to know your representative a lot better because now I'm sure that there's not many people uh, that live down on the Randolph Road and more so with talk to Auburn Pat over in Worcester, halfway between Worcester and Woodbury. But I don't know that, but. Yeah, they don't know who he is. I don't. I don't think they even know who he is. No, they don't. and vice versa, they right. Reciprocal. Yeah, they probably would. Woodbury doesn't even know who Dave Yagoni is. Well, hopefully you're available, Gary, tonight <laughs> that we have our representative. You can speak as a representative. Um, yeah. Your expertise on the subject. Well, I don't know if your expertise makes you common sense to me. I just think it makes a lot of sense to have one representative per district. Yeah. We did have to get I think we're too big. 
Judy's not going to be a divorce when I go get married in the first place. Is it voters or is it population? 12 voters. Okay. Um, yeah, I think. Uh, 42, I think. Yeah, I think. Oh, it might be just about. We might be able to make it. But then what do you do with 900 people? Well, I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. Is there any other business? Yeah. We have executive session. Yep. I make the motion to join the executive session because I find that premature general public knowledge is generally placed in public body or a person involved in a suspension this I make a motion to enter executive session to discuss confidential attorney client communication. Made for the purpose of providing professional legal services to the body. Required by 1 BSA, section 315, paren 1, paren small i. I have a motion by Gary. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Brian. Brian. All in favor say aye. Aye. That was in it. Any opposed? We are now in executive session. I'm going to just take a quick note.